evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. Good evening and welcome to Sinsheimer Stadium in San Luis Obispo. We've got game two between the Slow Blues and the Solano Mudcats on the Blues streaming network. What a scene it is today in Sinsheimer with fans pouring in to watch the Blues play on the first fireworks Saturday of the summer. The 3-2 and two Blues dropped a tough one, tough one under the lights last night. With a 3-1 lead in the sixth inning, the Blues allowed the Mudcats to score seven runs, all with two outs. In fact, the Mudcats scored all of their runs in the game with two away and took game one of this series by a score of 9-3. With Lucas Alanese on the mound, the Blues are looking for a win today to even the series with the Dirty Fish from up north. The Mudcats want to repeat last night as closely as possible. Their offensive approach was fabulous, they threw strikes, and maybe most importantly, they capitalized in the big moments. Their seven-run inning took all the momentum the Blues had, and they didn't look back. As the Mudcats look to stay undefeated, they hand the ball to right-hander Caleb Davis. Can the Blues keep the series alive, or will the Mudcats stay in the win column? It's Game 2, and it's coming up next on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. As we welcome you here into the press box, Jack Smith alongside you as always. Excited for this Saturday matchup between the Blues and the Mudcats and the first fireworks game of the summer for your San Luis Obispo Blues. Make sure you're staying tuned throughout the entire broadcast and after the game as we will have the fireworks show here on the Slow Blues streaming network. But for now, the Blues want to make some offensive fireworks on the field. They only scored three runs last night, but they were oh so close to cracking through on the offensive side. The Blues had six extra base hits, which is more than the four they had in the four games coming into the series. The problem was the one big inning where they allowed seven runs, all with two outs, after retiring the first two batters that was in the sixth inning after that the Blues just didn't have any juice and they ended up coming away with an unfortunate loss their second of the year the Blues are three and two the Mudcats are one and oh and they're playing here in their second game we're gonna take a step back for a little break and then come back for the national anthem
A beautiful rendition of the national anthem from Slow's favorite, the Central Coast Harmony Chorus. And the fans here at Sinsheimer are ready for some baseball. Let's take you to the starting lineup for the Solano Mudcats, who are 1-0 on the season. It's Max McGee making his Mudcats debut in 2023. He plays left field and bats leadoff. Austin Russell, yesterday night's three-hitter, who went three for five, plays third base and bats second. Noah Garcia, the first baseman from Laverne, is in the three spot. Jake Tandy cleans everything up from the University of the Pacific. Three for four with a double yesterday for Tandy. Tyler Toby, the shortstop, falls a little bit down the order. He bats fifth. Caleb Jeskis behind the plate. He bats sixth for the first time in this series. Michael Benavides, the right fielder, sticking in right field. He bats seventh. Eighth and ninth, it's Nate Hamburger, the center fielder, who was one for four yesterday. And Alec Nava, yesterday night's leadoff hitter, that will play second base. For the Blues on the mound, it's Lucas Alaniz, who has the lone loss for the Blues on the season from that initial first weekend. The six foot, 295 pound right hander headed to Cal Berkeley has thrown four innings for the Blues this summer, gave up three earned runs in that loss to the Bay Area Admirals last weekend. It's the Blues and the Mudcats, game two of this three game series. And for the Blues, this feels like one that they really want to take and win. And then you go into tomorrow's matchup, make it be a rubber match in the afternoon. The Mudcats have not won their opening series in any of the last three summers. So the Blues don't want to concede defeat here on Saturday. They want to get right back in the win column and stay above 500. They have not been at or below 500 at any point this summer. We're just about ready for first pitch here at Sinsheimer Stadium. Beautiful crowd that's filed in, ready for fireworks after the game and baseball on the field. Due up this inning. For the Mudcats, it's Max McGee, Austin Russell, and Noah Garcia. Alanese taps his feet. Wiggles back and forth and comes home. And McGee takes that one outside off of the glove of the catcher, DeBrum. It's no balls and one strike. First pitch, a little bit early, 6.04 p.m. here in San Luis Obispo. Beautiful sunny day. High 60s, low 70s is the weather as that's a strike. Had a chance to talk with Alan Ease before the game. He felt pretty good about his first performance and now just about refining it for the second time that he goes out there for the Blues. 1-1. One, one. And McGee dribbles it on the ground towards third. It's Augusto Schroeder, the third baseman, makes a sidearm throw across the diamond, and that's out number one. That's how this game gets started. Let's walk you through the defense for your San Luis Obispo Blues. In the outfield from left to right, it's TJ Adams, Nin Burns the second, who's always there in center. Corbin Ibarra from Tulane gets the start in right. On the right side of the infield, Zach Tollerman, Jacob Ruley, Darcy and Schroeder on the left side. August Johnny DeBrum is behind the plate for another start at catcher, and as we mentioned, Alan Ease is on the mound. The 0 pitch to Austin Russell is outside for a ball. It's 1-0. Allen E's still in the windup. He kicks and deals. And that's outside for ball two. This is Austin Russell from Tarleton State. Three for five with a double and yesterday night's matchup. 2-0. That's in there for a strike on the outer half. Alan Ease, you'll see a couple different pitches. He's got a fastball, a changeup, a curveball, and a slider. Slider's the best pitch. That's what he'll go to in the big spots. There it is right there. Down. What a big swing and a miss from Austin Russell. And the count two balls and two strikes. Hot sauce chance rain out for the first time. Alan Ease wiggles in the windup. Very long pause. He kicks and deals. And that's a liner into right field. Base hit. Ibarra's over to cut it off, and it gets by him. Austin Russell is turning around for second. He's not stopping. Russell is heading to third with a triple. Corbin Ibarra had that ball just bounce past him, almost like a ping pong ball off the end of the table. And now a runner at third base with just one out. And the Blues have some work to do. Ibarra just couldn't keep it in front in right field. That's a big mistake by the right fielder. Goes down as a single and an error. But now Alan E's got to work around his defensive mistake. It's Noah Garcia at the plate. DH yesterday plays first base today, and he can put the Mudcats in the lead with a base hit or a fly ball. Alan E's deals 1 0, and that's a fly ball, but foul down the left field line out of play. So Russell stands at third after the single and the. Misplay in right field by Ibarra. 
Alanis from the stretch. First base side of the rubber comes home. And that's inside. Game two of this three-game set between the Blues and the Mudcats. The Mudcats did strike first yesterday. They scored one run in the fourth before the Blues responded back with three. 2-1. And that's in there for a strike on the outside corner. Two balls and two strikes. Garcia one for five with two runs scored yesterday. Alanese kicks and fires, and that's a tapper right back over the mound. This will score a run, and it gets by Ruley, the second baseman, and here comes a big turn from Garcia. He's trying for two, and he's in there safe. One run in on the double from Noah Garcia right over the mound, and the Blues trail 1-0. Well, nothing Alanese can do there. He got the soft tapper. It was just over his head, and the defense behind him couldn't make the play. And a couple of inches have already decided the way that this game's starting off. It is 1-0 Mudcats here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. So Russell scores, and now there's another runner in scoring position with one out, and that gets by DeBrum. And the runner's going to advance. Noah Garcia takes third base, and the Blues are not sharp here early. And now we're going to be meeting at the mound. This is a good decision by the infield for the for the Blues as they back away now, deciding whether to bring the infield in or not. And it looks like Dean Trainer, first-year head coach for the Blues, is going to decide to keep the infield in with Jake Tandy at the dish, who was 3-for-4 with a double yesterday. The Blues don't want to get down by too many runs. And that's a broken bat chopper off the mound. It's Darcy who has to field it on the backhand. Wicked hop. But he gets the out at first, and the runner stays planted at third. There's two away. And we've seen a couple of those so far this season where the ground ball is going right back up the middle. The shortstop's ready to play it on the forehand, and it takes a weird bounce off the side of the mound. But Darcy, the fifth-year veteran, second-time blue, knew how to handle it, and there's two away. Here's Tyler Toby, the shortstop. He takes a fastball in there for a strike. Just an absolutely nefarious hop off the mound. It must be one of the most difficult plays for a shortstop to make. But Darcy made it look easy, and there's a swing and a miss on the slider. No balls, two strikes. Nova Garcia at third, one run already in for the Mudcats. We'll see if Alanis goes back to the slider 0-2. Here's his pitch, and that's upstairs, one ball and two strikes. One thing the high fastball does is it raises the sights. So now if Alanis does want to go back to the breaking ball, this could be a time to put one underneath the strike zone. One, two. That's what he did, and he struck him out. Beautiful pitch from Alanis, but the Mudcats score one run in the first inning on the misplay by the Blues. And we head to the bottom of the first inning, and the, and the Blues will trail all the way. Heading to the bottom of the first, it's Nin Burns, Jacob Ruley, and TJ Adams coming up for your San Luis Obispo Blues. Bottom of the first, and the Blues trail by one here early on the single, and the misplay by Corbin Ibarra in right field, and the RBI from Noah Garcia on the double, as here is the slow Blues batting lineup for today. 
in game two of this three-game series. Nin Burns the second, as always, in the leadoff spot. He plays center field. Jacob Ruley from CSU Bakersfield is again in the lineup in the two spot. TJ Adams and Trevor Schmidt, the Arizona boys, play three and four in Dean Trainer's batting order. Left field and DH go Adams and Schmidt. Cody Darcy, the shortstop from Arkansas State, bats fifth. Corbin Ibarra back in the order. He plays right field and bats sixth. Zach Tollerman at first base and in the seventh spot. And then Augusto Schroeder and Johnny DeBrum round out the order, third base and catcher, respectively. Nin Burns is the leadoff hitter for the San Luis Obispo Blues, who are trailing by one run here in the first. And Nin Burns, a guy that if he can get on, could put some pressure on the Mudcats as the Blues look to tie this one up or retake the lead as the game goes on. They'll be facing Caleb Davis, a former all-CCL first-team arm for the Mudcats. That's in there for a strike. Last year, Caleb Davis, this righty from Sonoma State, tied for the most wins in the CCL with nine and a 3.39 ERA in 50 and a third innings pitched. Burns takes the 0-1 for a strike, and quickly he's behind in the count 0-2. Davis, 6'2", from Sonoma State. You'll see a different repertoire of pitches. Yeah, good numbers everywhere he's gone. 0-2. And Burns strikes out swinging. Three pitches and an out here for the Blues in the first. This year at Sonoma State, Davis had a 5.87 ERA in 15 and a third innings pitched. 11 strikeouts to seven walks. But he's in his second season for Solano, and they're entrusting him with the second start of the summer. And he minced up Nin Burns early. Here's Jacob Ruley, one for four with a double yesterday in his Blues 2023 debut. The O.O. is in there for strike one. Real good command out of the hand of Caleb Davis. A one, and that's in there for a strike. He's peppering that outside corner, and the Blues again behind in the count, 0-2. So Ruley chokes up with two strikes. His back foot is completely on the line in the back of the right-hand batter's box. 0-2. And that's a high drive to deep center field. Hamburger's chasing it. He's not going to get there. He watches it bounce off the Walsh engineering sign in center field. And Jacob Ruley is going to turn 4-3. Here comes the relay throw from Toby. It is just in time to get Ruley. And the Blues can't believe it. Huge argument at third base as Ruley was tagged out by what looked like an inch and the Boo Birds raining out at Sinsheimer. Ruley won't leave the bag and Dean Trainer's coming out to argue the call. It was a mammoth shot to center field off the bat of Jacob Ruley and if he was out, it could not have been by more than a foot or maybe even a couple of inches. And Blues fans believe it's a blasphemous call here at Sinsheimer, and Dean Trainer is trying to argue the same thing. We'll see if he has any success as Jacob Ruley still standing there on the bag. Dirt-covered Blues uniform as the Blues are wearing the white pinstripes today. He's standing there, hands on hips. He doesn't want to give up this triple he thinks he earned. Conversation still ongoing. And now Dean Trainer going to head back to his own dugout, and the umpires are going to converse about the call. To me, from here, it really looked like Ruley was just able to get in there. I think the ball beat him by a couple of inches, but his slide, as he slid head first towards the far corner of the bag, away from where Russell, the third baseman, was playing, it looked like he got in. And this is a big call in the game as the Blues want to tie this game right back up after the Budcats scored in the first inning. For Ruley, it would be his second hit, second extra base hit of the summer. Here comes the call, and Ruley is still out. And the Boo Birds continue to rain out. It's loud here at Sinsheimer. Big crowd, and they don't approve. Well, that's the second out of the inning for Ruley, who gets credit for a double. And caught trying to extend it to three. And now T.J. Adams coming to the plate, the left fielder from Arizona. Nobody on for the Blues. 
Caleb Davis on the hill. He kicks and deals. And that's in there for strike one. Eventually, Davis is going to groove a fastball in there on the first pitch. And the Blues are going to be swinging away. Into his windup, the 1 That's a big swing and a miss from Adams. And the count is 0-2. Adams was mic'd up for batting practice this weekend. The awesome social media team will have a video coming out on social media platforms, maybe here on the YouTube channel as well. But Adams, a treat as always. Here's the 0-2. And that's upstairs. We had a chance to talk with Adams earlier in the season after he was a big player of the game in his first game with the Blues. You might remember talking about cornhole after a game, but Adams, a real character. 1-2. And that's just outside. Real close to take, but the count moves to 2-2. Two and two. Adams batting 333 in the young summer for the Blues. He's hit two doubles. He's got two runs batted in. 2-2, two -two. and he just catches a piece of the breaking ball and fouls it back to the on-deck circle where Trevor Schmidt is waiting. He'll come up to bat if Adams is to reach here with two outs. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The Blues trailing by one. Davis delivers, and Adams strikes out swinging. We head to the top of the second inning. It is still Mudcats 1, Blues nothing here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Top side of the second inning here at Sinsheimer Stadium. The Mudcats lead the Blues by a score of one to nothing. The Blues got a double from Jacob Ruley in the bottom of the first. He tried to stretch it to three, and a real close call at third base did not go the Blues' way. And then T.J. Adams struck out to end the frame. But the Mudcats have had a real nice offense here to start their season at Sinsheimer Stadium. They scored a run in the first on a single from Austin Russell that got by Ibarra, the right fielder, and then a nice at-bat from Garcia, who hit a flared double to center field to bring him in. Two up this inning, Caleb Jeske, the catcher, Michael Benavides, and Nate Hamburger, the center fielder. Alan E's back out, and he dishes a little bit inside on the slider, 0-1-1. Game two of this three-game series where the Blues play this week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, then another off day. The count two balls. And no strikes before two games against the Menlo Park Legends on later in the week, next week. 2-0. And that's driven down the right field line. Ibarra's going to chase it, but it's foul off the fencing. Two balls and one strike. The Blues had a collection of off days to start this week. In fact, three. They played Monday, but didn't play again until Friday. He talked with some of the different players about what they did with their off days. And it was a large collection. I heard that some players went to the beach. I talked with Jason Hansen. He said he made four trips to Costco. And I don't know what he would have needed, be it chimichurri steak or pumpernickel bread. I have no idea, but spent a lot of time at Costco during the week. Is there's a swing and a miss on the slider. And DeBron picks it up for the strikeout. First strikeout of the day or Lucas Alanis, but I'm not sure what one man has, if, he, if one man has any need to go to Costco four times in one week. I did, thought the deal was you're supposed to buy stuff in bulk if you're going to Costco. But for Jason Hansen, apparently it was convenient and the rules don't apply to him. A one, and that's fisted in the air.
towards first base. Tollerman, the lanky first baseman, going over. He sticks his glove up and can't make the catch in front of the netting. And the count, no balls and one strike. The only thing I know he got for certain, and that's Hanson at Costco, was the chicken Alfredo meal, which he said he microwaved and ate for dinner. So if you're wondering what fuels the Blues in 2023, for Jason Hansen, it's Costco. A one, and that's in there for a strike on the slider. No balls and two strikes. Alanis has responded well to the run. He struck out two batters in a row across these past two innings. Looking in at Michael Benavides, he kicks and fires and misses way upstairs all the way to the backstop. Extra malice on that pitch in the count one ball and two strikes. One and two the count on Benavides as Alanis works quickly and strikes him out looking on the slider. Beautiful pitch from Alanis and there's two away. Well, Nate Mills, who, who will join me in the fourth inning, him and I were shagging with some of these pitchers during the game in the outfield during batting practice. And Alanis was one of the guys out there, so got to talk with him for the first time this season. And it was that slider that he highlighted. I asked him, the two strikes, you got to go to one pitch. What are you going to? And that's the pitch he's most confident in, and it's worked wonders so far here today. Outside of the one run he allowed, which is not exactly on him, that slider's been dotting both corners. 1-0. And that's upstairs. Two balls and no strikes. But Alan East, three straight strikeouts. The one run unearned on the air by Corbin Ibarra. 2-0. That's upstairs as well. Tough zone on that high fastball. It seems like both pitchers aren't getting the call at the top of the zone. And the count is three balls and no strikes on Nate Hamburger. Alan East back into his windup. And that's fouled out of play. Hamburger was one for four with a triple yesterday. That triple came in the seven-run six inning that basically sealed the game for the Solano Mudcats, who ended up winning it 9-3 to three from Willamette University. And that's a strike. Blue thinks it's strike three, but that's strike two. His head was in the clouds. He was thinking of what he's picking up at Costco after the game. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Alan, he's looking to strike out the side. He kicks and fires. Back to the slider, and it's strike three on the swing and miss. Three strikeouts in the inning for Lucas Alanese, and he gets the Blues right back into the dugout. We head to the bottom of the second. It's 4-5-6, due up for your San Luis Obispo Blues, starting with Trevor Schmidt. of the second here. It's in Scheimer and it's Trevor Schmidt due up to start it off. Cody Darcy and Corbin Ibarro will follow him as the Blues trail the Mudcats 1-0 here on the Slow Blues streaming network. Schmidt who's leading off this inning, cleaning things up for the Blues today, batting as a designated hitter, hitting 400 on the season for your San Luis Obispo Blues. Two doubles, three runs batted in. That leads all the players that are starting today for the Blues. The OO and Schmidt swings and misses and it's 0-1-1. That looks like a change-up out of the hand of Davis. 
but he still has that excellent command. Schmidt has also walked seven times. I feel like that's of note. So a 400 batting average in the OBP is far higher as he's got another base hit, a liner to right. It bounces two hops in front of Benavides, who gets it in quickly. Trevor Schmidt aboard with yet another hit for the Blues here in the summer. Schmidt is killing the ball here for the Blues in the summer of 2023, and he's continued to move up the lineup. He hit seventh on the first day for the Blues, and now he's here's the cleanup hitter. Even on an off day for him in the field, gets the nod for the designated hitter position, and he's already one for one. Here's Cody Darcy, the shortstop. He takes a breaking ball down low, one ball and no strikes. Schmidt hit that ball 101 miles an hour off the bat. 1-0, and Darcy taps it foul. And some of these players the Blues are bringing in, the ball just flies off the bat. You can tell when you go down for batting practice that some of these swings are just different. And you're talking about mostly it's a lot of the guys that are playing at the Division One level, and that's what coaches really covet is the exit velocities, the power, everything like that. But whether it's Adams or Schmidt, even Darcy here during batting practice, some... Sometimes these guys can really launch it as the count is one and two on Darcy. The Blues haven't hit a home run yet, but they did hit six doubles yesterday, including four of them in one inning where they scored all three of their runs. But the talent the Blues are bringing in this summer is a big step up from summer's past, and they're expecting at least 30 players who are going to be playing at the D1 level next year to don a Blues uniform this summer. 1-2, and Darcy takes the slider inside. Real close pitch, it's 2-2. Two and two. And that, that's no knock, too, on the local talent, the players that are working their way through community college. Everyone here is talented. But when it comes to guys like Schmidt, you can just tell they have some different swings. They're obviously, everyone's working on something, but the ball flies off the bat as the count moves to three balls and two strikes. Darcy's one of those guys, a lot of the guys in the lineup today really can hit the cover off the ball during batting practice, and it's not the kind of swings that are going to generate home runs, as that's obviously not what they're looking to do in BP, but laser line drives the other way. 3-2, and that's upstairs. Darcy draws a walk, real nice at bat for the shortstop from Arkansas State, and there's two runners aboard. And that leaves things in the hands of Corbin Ibarra with nobody out. The right fielder from Tulane. Making yet another appearance for the Blues. He's 0 for 2 on the season so far. Came into the game a couple days ago over the weekend. Showing up from Tulane, who lost yesterday to LSU in the first game of that regional. Real tough draw for Tulane, who miraculously worked themselves into the tournament. But Ibarra's here playing for the Blues and gets the start in right field today on Dean Trainer's lineup card. Big spot with two, two runners on and nobody out. And he takes a fastball for a strike. It's Schmidt at second. He singled, and Cody Darcy at first. He just drew a walk. The Blues are going to get to Caleb Davis and get back in this one. It's one nothing Mudcats. Davis comes set. Glove held at the belt. He looks back at second, now comes home, and just misses the outside corner. One ball and one strike. So now Davis collects himself, still waiting to tow that rubber. Puts one blue cleat in front of the other and looks in to Jeske for his sign. There's a tapper foul on a line. It's one ball and two strikes. Ibarra did not play this past season at Tulane in his freshman year. After playing at IMG Academy, played in 18 games his senior year, 256 batting average, eight runs batted in. So looking for his first hit this summer. One ball and two strikes. Got to put something in play. Here it is. 
and is tapped towards short. This could be two. Toby plays the big hop, and he can't make the flip to second base as the Blues catch a break. Toby lost the ball, and his base is loaded with nobody out. The shortstop, Toby, was almost down in downward dog trying to pick that one up and just could not pick it out of the glove. That's a tough play. You do play that big hop, but sometimes when you go down to try and do the flip, you lose the ball. And it seems exactly what happened to Tyler Toby there. Big spot, bases loaded, nobody out, and it's Zach Tollerman at the plate. And Tollerman takes it high. Zach is one for seven for the Blues this year, but it's worth noting that one hit a double, and he's got six walks. He's been a real patient hitter for the Blues. We're trying to even this one back up, or in this situation, maybe take the lead. Dollerman drives one out to center field. Hamburger has to play the sinking liner, and a diving catch by McGee, the left fielder. What a miraculous play, but the Blues score a run on the sacrifice fly from Zach Tollerman, and they're going to call... They're going to call Trevor Schmidt out at third base. I believe they just called Trevor Schmidt out after not tagging up. And now there's another argument going on here between the Blues coaching staff. I don't think a run is being put up on the scoreboard for the Blues. And Dean Trainer making yet another visit from the home dugout. And that is a tough call to make as an umpire. But there's at least one out. The only other alternative is maybe McGee didn't catch it. But they tried to get a force out at third. This would be a crazy call. It would put two outs on the scoreboard, erase the run for the Blues. And the Blues might have gone from bases loaded, nobody out, to no runs, two outs, and not even a runner at third base. And the Blues already feel like they've been cheated today after Ruley tried to stretch a double into a triple and was called out by just a step. Both of these calls that the Blues do not agree with happening at third. And Dean Trainer is still working his way out of the dugout, and he's tossed! Dean Trainer thrown out in the bottom of the second inning. For the first time this summer, Dean Trainer is out of this game, and he won't let up. Dean Trainer is all the way past the mound, and he is furious over how the Blues could have had two runners in his mind cheated out. And he is letting the third base umpire have it. Now all the Blues coaches are out, and Dean Trainer has to be consoled by the rest of the coaching staff. He is in disbelief over these two calls at third base. And he will not let up. He's still going on. And at this point, hard to blame him as the Boo Birds rain out at Sinsheimer. The Blues just went from bases loaded, nobody out. What could have been a sacrifice fly on a beautiful diving catch off a liner from Zach Tollerman. And now the umpiring crew is going to say the Blues did not score. Well, one thing's for certain, Dean Trainer is maybe trying to light a fire under his squad. And he's out of this game. And we haven't even finished the second inning. Well, he's back in the dugout. The call stands, which means there's two outs. No run in for the Blues. As Trevor Schmidt, according to the umpires, did not tag up at third base. Well, this is an interesting turn of events here at Sinsheimer Stadium. And now it's Augusto Schroeder who all of a sudden comes up with two outs to try and bring in a run. That's upstairs, one ball and no strikes. Well, the Blues, at least so far, have a laundry list of things they're not happy with. The first call where Ruley was thrown out at third base and that call where... A, there was the diving catch and left, but then the call that Trevor Schmidt did not tag up. 
You sometimes see teams check on it. You rarely do see the umpire call the runner out. Two balls, no strikes on Schroeder. A 167 average with an RBI in this early season. 2-0. And Schroeder swings and misses at the sinker, 2-1. Well, Schroeder was standing in the on-deck circle for all of that. He went from, it went from bases loaded, nobody out, and Tollerman up, to now all of a sudden, if he's out, then this inning's over. So really has to change up his approach from what he was expecting when he was in the on-deck circle. 2-1, that's upstairs. If Schroeder were to walk, it would load the bases, and Johnny Brum, the catcher, would come up, who was one for two for the Blues this year. Three balls, one strike. Hitter count for Augusto Schroeder. Here's the pitch, and he taps it on the ground towards short. Can Toby redeem himself? He throws on the run in time to get the runner at first. And again, the Blues don't agree with the call at first. Garcia pulled his foot off the bag and then tagged out Schroeder. And the Blues thought that the runner tagged first base before the tag. But nothing's changing here in the bottom of the second. The Blues do not score, and we head to the top of the third inning. It is 1-0 Solano Mudcats. Well, the Blues, not happy with the way that this has gone through two innings, but they got to keep their head on their shoulders and keep working through it. It's 9-1-2 due up for the Solano Mudcats here in the inning. Alec Nava, Max McGee, and Austin Russell, the hitters due to bat against Lucas Alanese in this one-run game here in the top of the third. Alanese comes home, and Nava taps it right back towards the mound. Alanese picks it up, slings it to first in time for a one-pitch out. After the shenanigans of last inning, the Blues now operating without their manager as Dean Trainer had seen enough through a couple of frames. And he got himself tossed, arguing his second call of the day at third base. And for the Blues who lost yesterday, maybe Trainer is thinking that at the very worst, even if he wasn't able to get the call overturned, his club would be inspired for the rest of the game as Helen Hees misses outside. But you rarely see an umpire throw a coach out this early into the game. Dean Trainer was giving him an earful at third, and he's gone after just two innings. That 1-1 one -one is low for a ball. It's two balls and one strike. Alan Ease, that grounder by Nava to start the inning on just one pitch, ended a streak where he had struck out four batters in a row, starting with Tyler Toby to end the first inning. Two balls and two strikes on the leadoff hitter, Max McGee, who grounded out to third to start this ballgame. Alanis Wiggles comes home and misses low with the slider, three and two. Well, it's Alanis' job to get the Blues back in the dugout as quickly as he can so that they can try and tie this one up or take the lead. Get the bats back in the dugout. 3-1. And that's flown out of play. Count stays full. Hey, 
Alaniz is right back on the rubber. He works real fast. Here's another payoff pitch. And it's a, f a little flare to right field. Tollerman's chasing it, and it bounces in for a base hit. The right fielder Ibarra is there to pick it up behind the bag. His soft toss to second to keep Max McGee at first, but a one-out base runner for the Solano Mudcats. That ball was not hit hard, but it had eyes, and it fell for a base hit. There's an 0-0 fastball for a strike to Austin Russell, who hit a single to right field with one out in the first inning. The ball bounced past Ibarra, and Russell made his way all the way to third base and eventually scored the lone run on the board in this game. A 1. That slider's in the dirt. DeBrum keeps it in front, and the count moves to 1-1. One and one. One, one. That's just outside. Two balls and one strike. So Russell so far in this series is four for five. And it warranted the move up the lineup. He batted third yesterday. Here he's hitting second, which for most managers reserved for the best hitter in every lineup, or at least the hottest hitter. And it's three balls and one strike. He's been a puzzle that the Blues have not been able to figure out. The third baseman from Tarleton State. Six foot, 190 pounds. 3-1. And that's a liner to right field. This could be another base hit for Austin Russell, and it is. Ibarra plays it on the short hop and runners it first and second with one away for the Mudcats. So Austin Russell stays hot. He's two for two today, five for six in the series with an extra base hit yesterday as well. Noah Garcia at the dish now had a flare double to center field to knock in the only run that's come across. And he flies that one back off the screen. It's no balls and one strike. Alanese needs to bear down. Two runners on, just one out for the righty. Working from the stretch, he's still looking for his sign from DeBrum. He comes set, glove held at the belt, and DeBrum sets up outside. The pitch, swing and a miss, back pick to first, is not in time to get Russell. So DeBrum trying to show off the arm a little bit. But Russell was able to dive back in right under the tag of Tollerman. Big strikeout spot for Alanese unless he can roll a ground ball. No balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. And a tapper towards second. This could be two. The second baseman, Ruley, picks it up to Darcy for one. To first, a double play. Alanese gets out of it, rolling a... 4-6-3, double play, and the Blues do not allow a run in the top of the third inning. We had bottom three, and the Blues will bring up 9-1-2 to Brum, Burns, and Ruley. Johnny DeBrum to lead things off for the Blues here in the bottom of the third inning. Still chasing a run. It's 1-0 Mudcats here on the Slow Blues streaming network. 
And Caleb Davis back in the windup. He kicks and deals. That's outside. One ball and no strikes. The Blues have had arguments in this game for two runners that were called out by the third base umpire here. Head coach Dean Trainer was thrown out in the second. But the Blues are still in this game. It's only a one-run lead for the Mudcats. And it's 9-1-2 duet for the Blues. It's DeBrum who's up right now. One for two on the summer. Nin Burns the second on deck. And Jacob Ruley, the two-hole hitter, is in the hole. Here's the 1-1. And that's flown out of play and on the right field line. It's one ball and two strikes. DeBrum just finished up high school, heading to Monterey Peninsula College. One of a couple players that have played for the Blues headed there next year. Johnny, a solid 500 hitter so far. One for two. One two pitch is outside. Two balls and two strikes. DeBrum in his senior season at. The Tascadero High School hit 458 in 111 plate appearances. 2-2. Two -two. And that's just outside. Three balls and two strikes. Blues need a base runner, especially for the top of the order. It would be huge if DeBrum could reach. Here's the pitch. And that's outside. A big walk for the nine-hole hitter for the Blues, and there's a sign of life here in the bottom of the third. A runner on, nobody out. Nin Burns up to the plate now, struck out his first time on three pitches. Still looking to improve that batting average. He's reached base a good amount for the Blues here in the summer, but batting under 170 now is Nin Burns on the summer. And he's got a runner at first and Johnny DeBrum as the Blues Look to get back in this game. It's only 1-0. Here's the pitch. That's lined back to the screen, 0-1. Burns, who had a phenomenal year this past season at Cal Poly Pomona. All CCAA honorable mention this year. With a 317 batting average. Has not hit at the same level here for the Blues this summer. But the season's still young. He's got time to build it back up. And he's had ample opportunity batting in the leadoff spot every game for the Blues so far in the summer. Manning center field, which I talked to him yesterday, been his position his entire life. He's never really moved around. And it's 2-1. and one. A reminder, Nate Mills will join me next inning. and be interesting to hear his point of view from the dugout on the calls at third base. Burns was second on the Cal Poly Pomona Broncos in average slugging and OPS and with his speed of course led the team in triples 2-1 that's outside three balls and one strike and another ball would be two walks in a row and Caleb Davis is asking home plate umpire where these pitches are missing marginal amounts on the outside corner Burns in the driver's seat three and one as Davis in the stretch he comes home and misses inside Two straight walks to open the frame. And the Blues have runners at first and second with nobody out. So the Blues haven't had an issue getting anyone on. In fact, they had bases loaded, nobody out last inning when the questionable call was made at third. Tollerman hit the liner to left. There was a diving catch by McGee, and then the ruling was that Trevor Schmidt did not tag correctly at third base. It turned into a double play, and a, a grounder by the next batter, Augusto Schroeder, ended the inning. As Jacob Ruley, who has a double today and was part of another questionable call, he was thrown out at third, trying to extend his double to a triple. And the ball is count as one ball and no strikes. It's been eventful here early at Sinsheimer Stadium. It'll be eventful later as well with the fireworks, but already some action going on here at Sinsheimer during the game. A square to bunt and a perfect lay down the third base line. This will get both runners over, throw in the dirt, and it's scooped out by the first baseman, Garcia. But Ruley sacrifices over the two runners. That's a big deal. You got two runners in scoring position with under two outs as the Blues try and get back in this contest. So it's Burns at second, Johnny DeBrum at third base. 
And TJ Adams, who struck out to end the first inning, is back up at the plate. Redemption chance for the left fielder from Arizona. Blues, you feel like, need to capitalize in this spot. They've had opportunities, and really by no fault of their own, at least so far, have not capitalized to bring in the runners. Infield's playing back. The Mudcats will trade and out for a run. As a beautiful diving stop by Chesky, the catcher, to keep that one in front. I am not quite sure how he found the baseball with his glove. A full Superman dive by the catcher to keep that one in front. Most certainly saved a run with the Brum running at third. Big strikeout spot for Davis. He got Adams to swing and miss the first time up. And Adams fouls that one out of play, one and one. Adams redshirted this past season, first year at Arizona. After graduating Red Mountain High School in 2022, a career 338 batting average. First team all conference as a junior and a senior at Red Mountain. One ball, one strike, two runners on, one out. Davis comes home, and Adams takes a fastball for a strike. It's one and two. Adams was cream of the crop out in Arizona was ranked as the seventh best prospect in the state by perfect game and eventually ended up at U of A as the infield comes in here for the Mudcats with two strikes. One, two, and Adams cues it foul right off the handle and the count stays one and two, but real nice job from Adams to put as little of the bat as he guess he could on that pitch and stay alive. Trevor Schmidt on deck. He's already got a base hit today. But Adams wants to be the one to bring in the run. Another one, two. And that's a high drive towards right field. Benavides was playing in. He goes back and now camps under it to make the catch. DeBrum makes sure he tags up at third base, and he'll come in to score. This game is tied. DeBrum stayed on the bag for a long time after that catch just to make sure he was standing on third and then eventually tagged up to score the run. Sack fly for T.J. Adams. And we've got a tie ball game here at Sinsheimer Stadium. It's 1-1. Burns moved up to third as well. So now Schmidt will try and give the Blues their first lead of the day with a runner at third and two outs. Davis steals, and Schmidt takes a fastball outside, 1-0. Infield and the outfield push back for the Mudcats. I thought for a chance that that ball was going to get over Benavides' head because he was playing so shallow. But he eventually tracked it down, 1-0. And Schmidt takes that one up high, two balls and no strikes. Schmidt, a single back in the second. He made his way all the way around to third, and then came the ruling that he did not tag up on what would have been a Zach Tollerman sack fly. I'm sure he wants to get some, some revenge here. And he takes a two-seamer two, two for a strike. Schmidt, another player from Arizona, also redshirted after playing four varsity seasons at Servite High School in Anaheim, a real powerhouse in the Trinity League. 2-1, and Schmidt pops it up. Toby, the shortstop, is ranging back. Can he find it in the, in the blue sky? And he just barely makes the catch, reeling back into the outfield. The Blues score to tie it up. We are to the top of the fourth. It's 1-1 here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network.
We're back here in the top of the fourth inning, and that means I'm joined by Nate Mills. Nate, I, I, first off, I, what was your perspective from the dugout on the two calls at third base that have, I mean, been the defining pieces in this game so far? Yeah, that first one, um, or, you know, on that, on that tag play there, everyone was so excited about scoring that run. They didn't even realize that, you know, they, they went go, to go back and touch third and get another look, and they did. They put the fist in the air, signaling out, and just a wave just kind of just washed over the dugout just kind of are you kidding me just a little deflated and you know it's kind of it's tough to start a game like that you know you you get two strikeouts and you get thrown out at third base following an error in right field especially after a game like last night you're kind of thinking as a dugout you know here we go again and now it's on the blues right now to turn the ship around two and one the count on tandy and that's in there for a strike well, we often see, I think you see the appeal a lot to third base or wherever someone's tagging up from, but you rarely ever see the umpire make the out call. As Tandy strikes out swinging on the beautiful Allen E. Slider, DeBrum's up with it, goes to first in time for the out. But you see the appeal, and you just never really see the out call, so it hits you a lot harder when the umpire finally raises up that closed fist. And for the Blues, it was such a big spot, bases loaded, no outs, that they felt like, Almost two things were stolen from them at third base. Yeah, caught the dugout off guard for sure, especially how hard they were celebrating on the, on that on scoring that run. And it said they don't score that inning. They do, though, however, come back to score last inning on the sacrifice fly from Adams, and you saw DeBrom on that play made sure that he tanked up for certain. Does it count one ball and one strike on Tyler Toby? Alan Ease has worked really well since the run scored in the first, and there's a tapper right back to him. He takes a little overhand flip to first, and that play may be a little closer than it needed to be, but Toby's retired for the second out. It's a good play. Pitchers are athletes too. Alan Ease does a good job handling the ball, making the flip throw over the first for the second out. Since the run scored, Alan Ease has given up two weak singles, but he struck out five, and he's got two, two outs here in the top of the fourth inning, trying to get the Blues right back up on offense. He misses the inside corner. Yeah, and this is something Alan is good at. He's really good at getting that soft contact. He challenges hitters with the fastball, comes right back at him with the tight slider, which seems to be working again today. I talked with him during batting practice, as I was telling the viewers at home earlier. He does say that's the pitch he's most confident in. If, if it's going to be a two-strike pitch, he needs to make that perfect pitch. He's going to the slider. It's the one he seems most confident in, and for pitchers, you always have to try and have an out pitch. And for Alanese, that's clearly the one that he likes to use for the strikeouts or just any big spot. Yeah, clearly he's confident right now. It's very effective as he gets a bad swing right there from Jeske. Two balls, one strike. And the way he works on the mound, kicks it in quick and misses inside. Seems to have a lot of control over it as well. Just another sign of confidence in that slider too. 3-1, and Jeske fights it out of play. But when you can have the slider, and then when you want to just run that fastball in there, and it's not getting hit all that hard, you confident guy on the mound with those two pitches working the way they are. Payoff pitch, and that's fought on the ground towards first, past Ruley, the second baseman, and into right field. Ibarra comes up with this one cleanly, tosses into second, a two-out base hit for the Mudcats. It's a good piece of hitting there by Jeske. Puts together a good at-bat. He was fighting off pitches. He was 3-2. Alan Eves was working quickly. Seemed to have the momentum. And Jeske just slaps it into right field. It's a good at-bat with two outs. So now, potential two-out rally starter for the Mudcats. And Benavides, the right fielder, will look to get it going. He's 0-6 for 6 in the series with a strikeout his first time up. Beats that one on the ground towards short. Darcy's got to make a long throw across his body. And the... Scoop by Tollerman at first in time for the out. Alan Ease has worked three strong innings since giving up a run in the first, and we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 1-1 here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network.
the fourth here at Sinsheimer Stadium, and the Blues are tied in this game, in game two of this three-game series with the Mudcats. It's one-to-one. -one. Cody Darcy, Corbin Ibarra, Zach Tollerman do up for the Blues. What have you seen offensively from Slow so far, battling around some of the questionable calls that they have seen in their eyes at third base? Yeah, at first there was definitely clearly frustration in the dugout to get the bat off the shoulders, and it seems like since the single uh, that they've been picking the bat off their shoulders, they've been swinging the bat a little better and some momentum possibly going the Blues' way since manager Dean Trainer got ejected. And, and you know, uh, Jake really took the – took the reins in the dugout as the leader and said, we got to win this game, boys. Have to win this game now. It's good to see that out of the new guy. Just tap her foul. So really coming in here, he's only been around for a couple days, but he's taken up the helm as the leader in the dugout so far? Yeah, it was good to see that. He kind of got on the guys a little bit there. They're, they're a little shocked to hear it at first, but immediately a wave of hype. One ball, one strike on Darcy. Now Darcy is middle infield mates with... Jacob Brule, they've been playing some pretty good defense up the middle for the Blues since arriving just a couple days ago. And Darcy in his first at-bat drew a walk. The Blues have walked three times, and they've got two hits through three innings. Here's the 1-2 offering from Davis, and Darcy strikes out swinging, and there's one away. Yeah, again, talking about the past few games with that sweeper, and Caleb Davis showcases it there again against Darcy. For that out pitch, as you were talking about earlier, a pitch that's not a strike, a pitch that makes the hitters chase, and he uses it right there for out number one, strikes out Darcy. Corbin Ibarra hit what looked like a tailor-made double play ball to short back in the second inning, but Tyler Toby fumbled with it, couldn't make the flip, and Ibarra reached on the air, and he takes that change up a little bit low, 1-0. Ibarra, just the fifth player in Tulane baseball history, with his last name to start with a Y. Stats that matter, right? Who's, I was just going to say, who's keeping track of that? Tulane, I guess. It was on the player profile page after he was recruited and signed to play for the Green Wave. They, they tweeted it out and said, only the fifth player in baseball history to have a last name that starts with a Y. Yeah, they got a designated guy checking the scorebooks. No, 86, no, 92, uh, 1. I'm curious as to... How many have, how many's last name start with an X? <laughs> it's got to be less than five. Two, one. And Ibarra takes that one for a ball. Three balls and one strike. Some of guys' last name like Young. It's like Young is pretty common. Yeah, that's Young. That's a good one. I guess that's it. Ibarra and Young. It's probably more. There's definitely more. Yeah. <laughs> Three, one pitch. And Ibarra hits a soft pop up. Down the right field line, Benavides chases it. It's off the top of the fence and then into foul territory out of play, three and two. I think the most important question is what school, baseball-wise, has the most players that have a last name that starts with a Y? That would be interesting to see. What school is going to come flex as to how many Y last names they've had? Youngstown State? The Penguins, right? I think Young was a good poll. That, that seems like the most common the most Y common, last right? name. Yeah. Three balls and two strikes on Ibarra with one out here in the fourth. Davis long hold from the windup. Now he's got his sign. Kicks and deals. And Ibarra strikes out swinging. He lunged for the changeup and didn't get it. Two strikeouts here in the fourth. Yeah, again, another out pitch. This changeup's not in the zone. He makes Ibarra go after it after a battling in a 3-2 count. And Davis gets the second out after getting Ibarra to chase on that changeup. And two away. Zach Tolleran playing first base today where he played for Cuesta College this past year as well. Transitioned from third to first this season for Cuesta. As we've mentioned routinely here on the broadcast, the Western State Conference Player of the Year. He really dominated at Cuesta this year, a 367 batting average. He was punishing baseballs. That's outside, two balls and no strikes. Davis ought to be careful here with that Sweeper doesn't want to get Tollerman extended on it with those long arms and shoot it down the right field line. Hitters count for the slugger. Two balls, no strikes. And Tollerman lifts a high fly ball to left field. McGee's going to chase it foul, and I don't think he's got a chance. It's off the lights. Something comes off right near the Solano Mudcats bullpen, and the ball's out of play. What did that hit? I thought it was a bird for a second. 
I think it was the lights. Uh, it doesn't look like glass, so it must have been the metal that's protecting the lights. I wonder if they're going to make Tollerman pay for that. <laughs> Here's the 2-1. And Tollerman hits a chopper. Fair ball down the left field line. Tollerman using the wheels to dig around first. He's headed for second base. He slides in with a two-out double. He stays standing. I thought he was going to have to slide. but Yeah, well, we talked about him going the other way, and he goes all the way around and hits a hard chopper down the third base line. Gets just over the head of Russell for extra bases. Get on your horse. With Tollerman's height and the way he swings down on the ball at times, it's, that's a, a batted ball that he can generate that I'm not sure many other guys have in their swing. Since he's so tall that he chops it straight down and he can get that hop that Russell had no chance it was over his head. He's tall and hits the ball hard consistently. Just watching batting practice, that bat always sounds different. Blues with a chance to take the lead. Augusto Schroeder looking to make up for his last at-bat where he grounded out with runners at first and second and two outs. And he had a, a real tough task because he goes from the on-deck circle thinking the Blues have just taken a run, advanced some runners, and he's got a chance to bring one in without making it out to then two outs. The Blues haven't scored, and there's not even a runner at third. Here's the 0-1, and that's outside. Nice sliding block by the catcher, Jeski, 1-1. A little jarring when you got to change your game plan quickly like that. you got to improvise a little bit as Schroeder, but the this plan always stays the same, putting the bat to the ball and finding a hole. And that's what he wants to do here with two outs. One ball, one strike, and that's flown down the right field line out of play. Schroeder trying to put one in play for the Blues, and take the lead it's been a roller coaster ride for the blues but again still a tie game and the blues have had more opportunities so far today than their opponents the Solano Mudcats Schroeder preparing for the one two Davis steals that's a change up and Schroeder holds back in the dirt two balls and two strikes and that's a good take there's a lot of movement on that change up Schroeder wanted to go after it is that a 1-2 count? Does a good job taking it. And the twos are hot. The changeup is how Davis has gotten both strikeouts in this inning. We'll see if he goes back to it 2-2. The pitch, it's the changeup, and Schroeder strikes out swinging. Davis ends up striking out the side. We head to the top of the fifth inning. It's still 1-1 on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. One here in the top of the fifth inning. Lucas Alanese back out there. And while Lucas was out shagging fly balls with us during batting practice, the Blues were playing hacky sack during batting practice down the first baseline. Now, I think hacky sack is a game that might be better prep for soccer players, but I guess for the Blues, a, a way to have some fun and prep for today's baseball game. But the sack was being tossed around off the feet of the Blues players. You ever played hacky sack before a game? 
You know, I was going to say that it's good eye-hand coordination, but eye-feet coordination more like. I think just practicing being an athlete and having some fun gets you ready for a game. I've definitely done some weird stuff to get ready, working on balance, but never hacky sack, no. I feel like fun was the main reason. I'm not sure it was a specific baseball preparation workout, but certainly looked like they were having fun. We might have to go join them at some point. As Nate Hamburger steps to the dish in this 1-1 game, 8-9-1, two up for the Mudcats. And Alan Ease still working from the windup with the shadows in his favor, kicks and deals, and that's a strike on the outside corner. The Mudcats scored in the first. Since then, Alan Ease has been locked down with five strikeouts in the three innings following. The Blues scored their one run back in the third. And that's spotted up on the outer half again, 0-2. It's the fastball for strikes and the slider below the zone for the strikeouts. We'll see if he goes to that there with his 0-2 count. He kicks and deals and misses high with a fastball, 1-2. and two. What I was talking about on the broadcast earlier before you join, Nate, is even that pitch, even though it's way high to make the count 1-2, and two, sets the sights high so that he can go back under the zone with the slider. It does. You're exactly right about that. 1-2. He opts for another fastball to Brum. Strata was strike three. And Alan East turns around wondering where that missed. He just missed that outside half of the zone. He's been picking at it at this at-bat. Been successful on the first two pitches, but now the count's even at twos. I think he's going back to this slider here. Here's the pitch. He tried to power a fastball by him, and Hamburger flew it out of play right over our heads. It's two and two. And as a hitter, the fastball and the slider have got similar actions. That fastball seems to be cutting. Nothing flat about this one. And obviously the slider breaking away from right-handed hitters and in towards left-handed hitters. 2-2, two -two, there's the slider, and that's out of play. We just got word that the fastball that was flown out of play 90 miles an hour out of the hand of Alan e. So he's up in the nines, and I think I'd be confident in my fastball too with two strikes if I could run it in there at 90 miles an hour. Yeah, that's sneaky fast. I, think he, I didn't think he was running up there like that. It does not look that fast from up here, but I guess... I'm happy I'm not in the batter's box. 2-2, two -two, and a tapper towards third. Augusto Schroeder has it on a big hop. He throws low. Beautiful scoop by Tollerman at first for the first out of the frame. Yeah, that's a great pick by Tollerman. I think Schroeder got caught off guard by the speed of Hamburger, the center fielder. But Tollerman saves him with that pick. Beautiful. He got extended, those long legs. They'll get out number one. Well, Tollerman got the nod at first today because Trevor Schmidt, who played first yesterday, had an unfortunate play on a pop-up where it looked like he kind of lost it in the sky and it fell in fair territory in that beginning. But I think the Blues are happy that Tollerman's at first today. He's made some excellent scoops at first. He looks comfortable there after playing there this season at Cuesta. And it's tough because you still want the bat, too, of Schmidt, and you get it. He'll be dh -ing. And the casualty in the lineup is JT Ricken, who had played every game for the Blues so far at DH in third. He's out of the lineup today. 1-1. One, one. That two-seamer misses the outer half. It's two balls and one strike. DeBrum is, I think, vying for his pitcher, Allen. He's out there. He thinks that some of these pitches are strikes, and they're not getting the call, but I think DeBrum is making it clear he, he wants those to be strikes the next time they come in those same locations. 2-1. That's upstairs. Yeah, he's not needing to work too hard to frame him or anything. He's putting his glove up, not moving the spot too much, and ask him, Blue, what's going on? Three balls, one strike. Going to come in the zone. Here's the pitch. And that's on the outside corner. I think the arguing from DeBrum on that last outside fastball may have influenced the call there to move the count full. Yeah, that's a pitch we saw last at bat. We looked back at the umpire asking where that missed. He gets it right there. 3-2, and the slider down low. A one-out walk for the nine-hole hitter, Alec Nava. Speed on the base pass, and the top of the lineup coming back up in Max McGee. So that's really one of the first times we have not seen a chase below the zone. And now a meeting at the mound. We'll see if that's the end of the day for Alan Ease. That's his first walk of the day. He has given up five hits as he's working here in the fifth inning, and that's going to be the end of the day. For the right-hander, a successful day. Gave up a run in the first. Has been dominant since then, but a call to the bullpen. We'll be back here with the new right-handed arm on the Slow Blue Streaming Network.
and I are working here We're back here on the Slow Blues streaming network with one out and one runner on in the top of the fifth inning. It's A.J. Moreno, the righty, coming in from the pen. What do you have on the right-hander? Yeah, it's going to be a fourth-year junior coming up next year at Cal Poly Pomona. Had a good outing against the Dodgers in the game two against them. 2.2 innings, six strikeouts, and hoping he can strike out here and bring some experience out of the bullpen for the Blues. Did give up two hits, three walks, and two earned runs in that game against the Dodgers, but the Blues ended up with a two-game sweep. He got the win in game two. But there's a runner at first. That's Alec Nava after the walk by Alanese. And Moreno, who deals ball one, trying to help Alanese get off the hook here. The runner on first, Nava, is his responsibility. So if he comes around to score, Alanese would have another earned run, would be in line for a loss at this point. Here's the 1-0, and that's in there for strike one. We're seeing Moreno fastball right around 85 miles an hour, so he's in the mid-80s. We'll see if he can run it up there a little bit higher and a real stress count. But similar repertoire to the starter, Alan Ease. There's a back pick to first. This could be close, and not in time is the throw from DeBrum. It's one ball and two strikes. It's a similar look from Moreno. Fastball... Velo isn't quite there, doesn't have the cut movement like Alanese as well, but he does have that slider too. As you can see right here, shadows covering home plate and the mound, but not the area right in front as there's a strike three call on the slider. Moreno shrugs it off, and he looks confident on the mound. That was a beautiful front door slide piece out of the hand of the righty. Yeah, beautiful slider starting on that front hip of Nava and breaks right into the strike zone. He's not ready for that one. Great bite, great spin. We've seen so many pitchers here in the early weeks that sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. And that one pitch just re-clicked my memory as that was the pitch that we were so impressed with from Moreno where it doesn't have the most movement, but he spots it up so well on the inside corner. 1-0. And there's a high drive to right field, but in the park and very playable for Corbin Ibarra. Has to move just a couple of steps, and he puts it away. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning as Adrian Moreno helps the Blues get out of the fifth. It's still 1-1 on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. You just missed the catcher Jeske doing the YMCA along with this huge crowd here at Sinsheimer Stadium. The first of three firework games of the summer. 
And the crowd is out in full force, and we just saw Jeske joining them in a YMCA dance in between innings as the Blues look to try and take a lead here. It's still 1-1. New pitcher on the mound. And a curveball packed to the screen out of the hand of Ryan Fortune. The right-hander, 5'11", 195 pounds from Marin Community College, the junior from St. Louis, Missouri. And it's one ball and no strikes on DeBrum, the nine-hole hitter, and the catcher for the Blues. And that's outside, two balls and no strikes. It's DeBrum, then Burns and Ruley do up for the Blues. Here in this tie game, one ball or one to one the score. Mudcats scored in the first, Blues scored in the third. And DeBrum rips a liner down the left field line, base hit. This could be extra bases for the catcher. He tags the bag at first, headed for second. He's in there with a stand up double to lead off the frame. And a boy, DeBrum. Gets a walk in his first at bat, a double there, and the Blues just love hugging the lines for extra bases. That continues again here. It's a fastball right down the heart of the plate, and DeBrum does what you're supposed to do, and he ropes it down the line for extra bases, and Nin Burns with a chance now to get the lead. Is this a bunt situation for the fastest player on the team? Yeah, it could be. DeBrum, not certain about his speed as well, but could be for Nin Burns. Where you're either ending up with a hit or a sacrifice. Right. The Blues right now just want to lead. And, and now with the runner in scoring position and nobody out, big chance for them in the fifth. And Nin Burns, who's 0 for 1 with a walk, is at the dish. He takes a fastball upstairs, two balls and no strikes. DeBrum really jumped on that 2-0 fastball and lined it down the left field line. It seems like with the win, that's the only area you can hit a home run is down either line, and that's where the Blues have been attacking so far. It's not deep or high enough. 2-0, and Burns bends backwards. It's 3-0. Yeah, that's where the wind's blowing. You look at the flag right now. It's directly out to left, but wind plays differently. We get The field's a little sunken in. Wind's moving in different directions in different part of the park, different heights. 3-0. That's in there for a strike. Ryan Fortune taking over for Caleb Davis, who was effective in his four innings of work, had five strikeouts, gave up three hits, one run, but did walk three blues. Hitters count, 3-1. And that's off the plate inside. A walk for Nin Burns, and the blues have two runners on and nobody out. Yeah, that works too. He could just get a free 90 right there. Runners now first and second. You got speed on first at least. And now Ruley with a chance here. Ruley sacrificed his last time at the plate. He came up in this exact same scenario. It was DeBrum at second, Burns at first, and he laid down a sacrifice down the third base line, and we'll see if he gets the call to do it once more with two runners on, nobody out here in the fifth. He also smoked that double. No bunt shown there and a big swing and a miss. It's no balls and one strike. Fortune doesn't look like he's really overpowering anyone with that fastball, and we haven't seen another pitch so far. No, it's it's a pitch you can see really well based on that release point. It kind of curls it right above his right ear, clear as day for the hitter. A one, another fastball. That's in there for a strike on the inner half, and within two pitches, it's 0-2 on Jacob Ruley. Ruley, as you mentioned, had that double back in the first, tried to extend it to a triple, was called out at third, and sacrificed his last time up. He's one for one. Big reason why the Blues were able to get on the board back in the third. Got to get the runners over here. As Fortune comes home 0-2. And Ruley hits a drive out to center field. Hamburger's backing up. DeBrum thinking about tagging from second. He bluffs towards third, and he's going to stay at second. So a non-productive out from Ruley, who just missed it. Hey, he did just miss it. Caught a little bit too under it. It was, it was similar to that double, hitting the same exact place. Center fielder was playing a little bit back. Hamburger anticipating Ruley's power, and he played right under it. Adams, the batter now, has the lone RBI for the Blues today. A sacrifice fly in the third that knocked in DeBrum from third base. Now he's just trying to get the runners over, maybe bring them in. And he fights it off down the right field line. Big cut. Just missed it. Foul. It's 0-1. Yeah, Adams getting some swing and misses out of him lately. Swinging at pitches he doesn't like early in, in counts. Swinging at breaking balls that aren't in the zone. I think right here it's important for him to get that fastball and put a nice compact swing on it. 
Breaking ball upstairs, one ball and one strike. Now I know you did the mic'd up batting practice with Adams, and I think he wasn't expecting the velocity coming through in BP. Swung and missed twice. I, I hope that makes the final cut on social media. 1-1, one, one, and that's a little bit low. Two balls and one strike. Yeah, some good sound bites there. And as you said, some high velo coming out of BP, but the guys were bracing, embracing the adversity. 2-1. And that's upstairs. It's three balls and one strike. Three and one the count on TJ Adams. The left fielder from Arizona has an RBI today. Here's the offering. DeBrum takes off for third, and it's high anyway. Bases loaded, one out for the Blues. And good job working a walk right there. Bases juice now, and this is the guy you want coming up right now in Schmidt. Trevor Schmidt. Leads tonight's lineup, at least, and runs batted in with three. Hitting over 400 for the Blues in the summer. He's got seven walks. He's got a couple extra base hits. And now there's ducks on every lily pad on the pond for Trevor Schmidt. Sure, he doesn't want to hear an, uh, any duck reference being a wild cat from Arizona. I kind of forgot about that. You're right. Playing in the Pac-12 finals. Well, both teams ended up making it to the regionals, and... Adams, who's at first now, and Schmidt, the batter, both from Arizona, but joining the Blues early after redshirting this year. And the Blues have a lot of players in regionals right now that will be joining the Blues later this season. But now a big spot. Bases loaded, one out for Trevor Schmidt. Fortune comes set, now comes home. And Schmidt takes it in the dirt, 1-0. The runners are DeBrum at third. Decent speed. Nin Burns at second, maybe the fastest man on the team. And TJ Adams with good speed at first. Schmidt is one for two with a single. And he takes that fastball out, two balls and no strikes. It has been, at least from our perspective, a pretty small zone tonight. It has been, and that's a pitch I thought he was going to call right there. Schmidt with a good spit. We now know what the strike zone is now, and yeah, it's small. 2-0, and Schmidt with a half-hearted swing, fouls it out of play, 2-1. and one. Not the kind of swing you want to unload in a 2-0 count. No, I'm curious why he swung at that one. That was a similar pitch we saw last time. In, in you're in a 2-0 count, you're sitting good right there, and I don't think that's one he thinks he can put a lot of damage on, as we saw there on the swing. Looking for something to drive, and that's outside. Three balls and one strike. A walk would bring in a run and give the Blues their first lead of the night. On deck is Cody Darcy, who is 0-1 with a walk. So if you're fortunate, you have to come in here and Schmidt is looking for a fastball over the heart of the plate. Here's the 3-1. And that is outside. An RBI walk for Trevor Schmidt. His fourth run batted in. And the Blues score to make it 2-1. to one. DeBrum touches home. And the Blues have their first lead of the night. There we go. Not exactly the explosive extra base hit or single that maybe the crowd was anticipating. But hey, gets the job done. A run is a run. A lead is a lead. And the Blues lead 2-1. to one. There's a lefty that's warming up real fast in the Mudcats' bullpen. We will see if Fortune even gets to face one more batter. He's walked three in the inning. Three of the last four batters. It was the double by DeBrum. A walk to Burns. The out by Ruley. And then two walks in a row to the Arizona hitters, Adams and Schmidt. And now the conversation that's going on on the mound. We'll see if Fortune stays in this game. And this is a big decision, too, because the Blues can really open this one up. We saw the Mudcats yesterday have a seven-run inning that basically ended the game, took all the wind out of the sails for the Blues. And the Blues could have an inning like that right here with Darcy coming to the dish, still bases loaded, and it looks like it is going to be Fortune's job to try and get Darcy out and get the Mudcats out of the inning. As always, he's one pitch away if he can roll a double play. But with the way that he's been throwing, if you're Darcy, you're either looking – for something outside the zone to take or your perfect pitch right down the middle. Yeah, absolutely right, Jack. Put a ball in the air into the outfield. That gets a job done, too. Obviously, he'd like a base hit, too. But a ball in the outfield also works. Then Burns with great speed at third. Oh, well. And Darcy swings at the first pitch. Doesn't catch it. It's 0-1-1. Darcy struck out his last time up, but walked in advance to second. Back in the second inning. Here's the 0-1 pitch. 
And Darcy hammers it out to left field. It's on a line. Hangs up for McGee, and he drops it. Burns is coming in to score. Adams takes off for third. There's going to be a play there, and it's offline. 3-1 Blues. Yeah, and this is a well-hit ball by Darcy. Thought it was going to land until it got closer to McGee and left. And it looks like he saw it all the way in, and the ball could have eclipsed right into the sun. That's a play I know I had a lot in the outfield. When you see it all the way in, last second you don't. Flinches at it. Luckily hits him in the glove. And that brings home Nin Burns. A break for the Blues. There's still one out, bases loaded, and that could be a fire starter for a deeper rally for the Blues. And the Mudcats, who knows, by innings end, might be kicking themselves that they did not catch that ball and left. E7 off the glove of the left fielder, McGee. That could be a big break for the Blues. As Corbin Ibarra comes to the dish now, reached on an air his first time up, struck out, he's 0 for 2. And he takes that one for a ball. Yeah, it's nice to see things go their way for San Luis Obispo. They've been an unlucky team, I'd say, so far in this season. In this inning right now, it's definitely turned around. That's in the dirt. They're looking for revenge for the sixth inning yesterday in which the Mudcats scored seven runs on five hits, an error by the Blues, all with two outs. In fact, all nine runs yesterday for the Mudcats were scored with two away. It's two balls and one strike on Ibarra, the pitch, and he taps it foul back and out of play. He saw that one. That was just a hung breaking ball right there, and he wanted to put the hurt on it, and especially at 2-1. You got some confidence as a hitter. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Three runners on for the Blues. Adams at third, Schmidt at second, Darcy at first. The pitch, and Ibarra watches it high, three and two. That's a good job by Ibarra leaving that one up in the zone. Or not in the zone, out of the zone. Moves to 3-2. Fortune has to come in here as the Blues have already taken a 3-1 lead. The payoff, and Ibarra fights it off down the right field line. Lefty still warming up in the pen for the Solano Mudcats. I'm trying to get an identification on who is getting loose for Solano. All right now, Fortune going after Ibarra with a 3-2 count. Bases loaded and one out. Ibarra's going to just try and put something in play. The pitch, and that's outside. Another walk with the bases loaded for the Blues, and it's 4-1. Wow, another free one for San Luis Obispo. He's just picking away once again at that outer half of the zone with that breaking stuff. And he awards Ibarra a walk. Four walks in the inning. The Blues have scored three runs, and they lead it by a score of 4-1. to one. Fortune staying in. Here's Tollerman, who's lined into a double play in a, in a weird way and doubled. He taps this one on the ground toward short. Could be a double play. Throw to second for one to first. Not it. No! The call is out at first, and Tollerman can't believe it. Tollerman looked to have beat the throw with ease. Wow, man. But he is called out at first. And wow. the Blues hit into a double play to end the inning. They do take the lead. as we After the fifth inning, it's 4-1, slow Blues. Not sure about that call at first.
back here on the Slow Blues streaming network where the Blues have taken a 4-1 to lead here in the top of the sixth inning. We got a chance to look back at the replay at first base. Zach Tollerman was most certainly safe on the play at first, but things just not going the Blues way today. They did, however, score a couple of runs on four walks last inning and a couple hits, a double by DeBrum, and then really it was the four walks by Ryan Fortune that allowed the Blues to bring across three runs. And A.J. Moreno is back out there. He will face Noah Garcia, Jake Tandy, and Tyler Toby here on the top of the sixth. Yeah, weird way to end an inning. You have so many things go your way, and then that call to end it, bizarre call. I mean, it, it wasn't even really close. But I think the guys are still fired up at that. They're angry, and they're ready to go. Almost helped them, you could say. Well, A.J. Marino came in, and he got the job done. Struck out Max McGee looking with a runner at first, and then got Austin Russell to fly out. He, he, right, he went right at the top of the Mudcat order, showed him his best stuff, and that earned him a second inning of work. It also helped he took Alanese off the hook. And now Lucas Alanese is in line for a win if the Blues can come through and hold on to this lead. Yeah, that's what they're expecting out of Moreno coming out of the bullpen. It's so a guy's seen college baseball baseball for quite a while, knows how to do it, knows how to go after hitters. And he just did it there in the last inning, picking up Alan Eads. Here on the top of the sixth, it's Noah Garcia, the batter, and that's high and out. One ball and no strikes. Caden Tynes, the sophomore from Cuesta College, is getting loose in the pen for the Blues. 1 0. That's a big swing and a miss from Garcia. Garcia's got a double, and he's grounded into a double play today. That double play was big. It ended the third inning, an inning in which there were two runners on for the Mudcats. And there's a poke job up the middle and into center field for a base hit. Garcia living up the middle. His balls in this series so far, he's been keeping with that up the middle approach. And that's a good thing you, you're seeing if, if you're in the Solano Mudcats dugout, seeing one of your best hitters, if not your best hitter, and Noah Garcia keeping the ball low and up the middle. you got to run on first now. Here's Jake Tandy. He's 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. He was one of five strikeout victims of Alanese across his four and two-thirds. As that's inside for a ball, it's 1-0. Tandy from the University of Pacific. Six foot one, 205 pound right hand hitter. Long hold from Moreno, and now he picks to first. For the Blues, going up against these Mudcats, it's a very resilient team that we're seeing, I think, the Solano squad. Even when the Blues have taken leads, Solano has really responded well and put runners on the next innings. Yeah, good competition here at Sinsheimer. This is why the Mudcats have been in the CCL for a while. As we talked about yesterday, a CCL team, but this is not a CCL league matchup for the Blues this summer. As there's a sky-high pop-up on the infield, Alan e or Moreno calls for it, but it's going to be Schroeder to make the catch. You had Moreno who wanted it, then Tollerman who wanted it. Eventually it was Schroeder that made the catch. Yeah, and Schroeder's got the priority there, and it's a good job by Schroeder to call it louder. Tollerman was was talking, but Schroeder was in a more comfortable position and also a good job by Tallman to back away, make Schroeder, let Schroeder get the pop-up for the first out of the inning. And with one out now, here is Tyler Toby, who's 0 for 7 in the series with four strikeouts. But the Solano is a team from up north, so they're in the north division of the CCL. The Blues are in the south division, which is basically slow and everything below in the state. So any matchups that the Blues have with the Northern teams are not counted in the league standings. 1-0. Big swing and a miss on the fastball. One ball and one strike. But you, you're right. It is a higher level of competition facing the teams that are in the CCL. 
And coming into yesterday's game, the Blues had won five of their last six against the Mudcats, but story was changed a little bit last night. Slider doesn't quite bend enough, two and one. The Blues haven't lost a series this year, though. They've got a two-game sweep, a two-game split, and if they win today, it'll force a rubber match tomorrow in a 2 p.m. first pitch. That slider's in there for a strike. Yeah, went back at it, missed a little bit there on that last pitch, and Toby had to duck out, push himself out of the way. Now the fans want hot sauce. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the offering, and that is rocketed on the ground on a couple hops, but fouled on the third base line. Two balls and two strikes. And there's that fastball, and that 2-2 count, wanted to blow up by him. Toby fights it off on the third base line. Two and two the count. Toby has struck out four times in this series, looking to avoid a fifth. 2-2 two -two offering. And there's a high drive towards left field. Adams, the left fielder, has a beat on it, puts his black glove up to make the catch near that 380 marker on the wall in left, and that's the second out of the frame. And Moreno tried to do a little change in tempo there with that slider. Kind of blooped it up there, upper half of the zone. Toby puts a nice swing on it, but there's out number two. So now Moreno just went out away from getting out of the inning, and he turns his attention to Caleb Jeske, a strikeout and a single today. Jeske making his summer debut is one for two. And he beats that one right into the grass on the infield, right to the shortstop Cody Darcy, who underhand flips to Ruley for the out. Through six, it's still Blues four, and Mudcats one. We head to the next frame. It's Augusto Schroeder, Johnny DeBrum, and Nin Burns do up for yours and Luis Obispo Blues. Fresh arm, fresh arm on the mound here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Coming in for the Solano Mudcats, it's Dayton Hicks, the lone lefty on the staff for the Dirty Fish. Hicks, the 5'10", 165-pounder from Diablo Valley College, the freshman left-hander, and it is an interesting release point out of the hand of Hicks. Max is out about 77 miles an hour, but you're about to see, as Nate Mills described it during the inning, a ground scraper. There it is, and that's outside. Yeah, that's definitely a certain uh, different look here for the Blues here in the sixth inning. A lot of movement on that fastball. Doesn't necessarily need to run up on the velo. It can be effective if there's a lot of movement on it. And that's down low. You're going to see a lot of the pitches that the Blues are going to swing at. Realize they're swinging a little too high because the pitches are going to be falling off the table a little bit. Almost like if you were rolling a marble and then all of a sudden hits the end and falls down. 
Yeah, some arm side tail. 2-0. And Schroeder lines it right back where it came from into center field, but it hangs up for Hamburger for the out. And yeah, if he grooved into that one just a little bit more, Schroeder kind of missed that one. There's a pitch lower in the zone, falling off the table. Schroeder, Schroeder tries to salvage it, almost finds a base hit, but records out number one. So Schroeder's over three, as here's Johnny Brum, Johnny DeBrum, who has not been retired. In his second game in a Blues uniform, he's walked and scored and then hit a double and scored a run back in the fifth. Yeah, he's seeing it well. This is a challenge for him here. And he swings and misses that pitch in the dirt. There isn't really a bigger change than a right-hander that throws overhand almost all the way over the top, as you were pointing out last inning, to now a lefty that's trying to pick up a little dirt in his fingernails as he throws the pitch. No balls and one strike on DeBrum. Here's the offering. And DeBrum yanks it foul. It's 0 2. Especially when you have that right hander who will cut the fastball and then a left hander where it tails. A lot of different looks happening there. This is why I just wanted to be a PO. <laughs> Seems more fun to not have to deal with these crazy arm slots, different velocities. In the count, no balls and two strikes on DeBrum. The pitch. And DeBrum hits it off the end of the bat towards short. Toby plays it on the backhand. Long throw across the diamond in time to get DeBrum by a step. It's a good play there by Toby. Kind of took his time getting up there, and he fired it right to first to Garcia for out number two. I will say I'm impressed by the wheels of DeBrum. You, you normally throw out the stereotype that catchers are slow, yeah. but maybe it's the young legs on DeBrum. He's got a lot of speed. He's still, still fresh. Still young in the legs. Speaking of speed, here's Nin Burns. Five stolen bases for Burns on the year as he picks up a little sword down on a slider in the dirt, 0-1. Burns has reached twice on two walks, scored a run back in the fifth. Last inning, the Blues scored three times to take this 4-1 lead. A one, and Burns yanks it. Foul on the dive is Russell off the foul line, and Burns is thrown out at first. Another close call that doesn't go the way of the Blues as their dugout exclaims in disagreement, but Burns is out by one step. We head to the top of the seventh inning. It's 4-1, your San Luis Obispo Blues. the seventh here at Sinsheimer Stadium and the Blues have a four to one lead here on the Slow Blues streaming network. Jack Smith, Nate Mills here in the Slow Blues press box with you. And A.J. Moreno is back out for another inning of work. He'll face the bottom third of the order for the Mudcats. Benavides, Hamburger, and Nava do up trying to preserve this lead for the Blues who lead by three runs. It was their first lead of the series and the first slider to Benavides catches him on the back and quickly a runner at first base. The Mudcats are finding ways to put runners on. I mean, for Benavides, it simply meant turning his back. 
but they have had traffic on the base paths. They have had a runner on in every inning but the second when Alanis struck out the side. Moreno had the right idea going with that slider first pitch. Benavides with a big old swing, wanted to get him to chase at it, but misses and it hits him for the first base runner. Oh, well, pitch. That's outside. Almost scoots past DeBrun, but he's able to catch it, snare it on the backhand. One ball and no strikes. This is Hamburger, who is one for six in the series. Had the triple yesterday, but 0 for 2 today with a strikeout. 1 0. And that's low. Two balls and no strikes. What you don't want to do is walk Hamburger. That would bring up the tying run with nobody out. As we're here in the top of the seventh inning, and A.J. Moreno, who came in in the fifth, worked a scoreless sixth, is back out there for the seventh inning. Two balls, no strikes, and that's upstairs, 3-0. and Starting to lose it a bit as Moreno as he falls to 3-0. and Got to come into the zone here with a three-run lead. The pitch is on the black on the inside corner. Three balls and one strike. Hamburger from Willamette, the center fielder. Five foot ten, 210-pound freshman from Salem, Oregon. 3-1. And that's fought off foul right past the corner of the press box. The count moves full. All of a sudden, a full count after being... 3-0, and that's a good job to Moreno, placing those two fastballs well. One on the black and one that he wanted Hamburger to not put a good swing on. Payoff pitch. That inside slider doesn't quite catch the zone. And another walk. Two free base runners here in the seventh inning, and now the tying run will come to the plate in the form of the nine-hole hitter Alec Nava, who's 0-for-1 with a walk. That's a, pitch, that's a pitch that's been working for Moreno so far in his outing. He misses the strike zone and walks Hamburger. Caden Tynes, the righty, is still getting loose for the Blues. See how many more batters that Moreno has in his evening. Corners playing in, and that's a big chase by Nava off the outside corner, 0-1. You look here at the defense the Blues are playing. Tollerman is in on the grass. Schroeder was on the grass on the 0-0 pitch, but once he saw Nava swinging away, he backed up a bit. We'll see if they scoot in here with two runners on, no out to protect a bunt. Here's the 0-1, and that is right there on the outside corner for a strike. Beautiful sequence from A.J. Moreno, and it's 0-2. Looking for a strikeout or a double play. Is A.J. Moreno on the mound with nobody out, two runners on. 0-2. Swing and a miss. Top of the zone and a strikeout for Moreno. Yeah, Jack, you said it. That's a beautiful sequence by Moreno, and he produces an uncomfortable swing from Nava. Four out number one, and the Mudcats flip the lineup top of the order. Sometimes you don't want a hanger. That's what that pitch taught me. That one, that's a pitch that if you're looking for it, you could drive it, but you're right, an uncomfortable swing. So you try to protect anything with two strikes. Here's Max McGee, the 0-0, and a swing tapper back into the glove of DeBrum, the catcher, 0-1. And and McGee so far today is one for three with a single. He reached second base in the third before the 4-6-3 double play ended the inning. 0-1 oh, the count. One out, two runners on. It's Benavides and Hamburger. The 0-1 uh, is in there. Strike two. Thought he wasn't going to get that call for a second there. A little delayed called. But he earned it. Now it's 0-2. After the two free 90s, two straight 0-2 oh, counts. We'll see if Moreno goes back to the slider in an 0-2 oh, count. He shrugs his shoulders, now comes home, and misses high off the glove of DeBrum back to the backstop. Both runners advance, and now two runners in scoring position with one away. It doesn't take much now, and Moreno kicking himself over that one. It's a bad miss to get both of the runners in scoring position. So a wild pitch out of the hand of Moreno. The count moves to one ball and two strikes, and now a base hit 
Well, and maybe plate two runs with the speed of Hamburger, the center fielder at second base. Benavides, the right fielder, also runs well at third. He may score on a deep enough fly ball. Another big strikeout spot for Moreno. What's it going to turn to? One, two. And that is fought off foul. McGee had to wait a very long time before getting enough of the end of the bat on that slider to keep the count at one and two. And he can go back to that fastball again here. One and two the count. One out, two runners on. Inner black, I say. Mist is outside with the fastball. It's two balls and two strikes. The leadoff hitter up. And it's Max McGee from San Joaquin Delta College in a big spot as the Mudcats look to launch a comeback in this game. 2-2. And McGee strikes out swinging. A.J. Moreno exclaims on the K, and there's two away. Yeah, fire me up. That's a good strikeout, but job's not finished. Still got runners at second and third, but that's got to feel good for Moreno to come back. Strike out McGee for the second out. Now with one more out, with two away here, Moreno can get out of the inning unscathed, and it's the two-hitter Austin Russell at the dish. He swings and taps it back into the glove of DeBrum. Russell's been a tough puzzle for the Blues. He reached his first two times up today on two singles. He's got five hits in the series. A one, and he launches that one foul down the first baseline. It's 0-2. Here we go, back to 0-2. The pendulum is swinging towards Moreno right now. He's just got to put a cap on this one, get the boys back in the dugout. He'd be fired up if he can get this out. He strides and shoots and gets a strikeout. He's fired up as he leaves the mound, and the Blues do not allow a run in the top of the seventh. We had bottom seven, and the Blues still lead it by a score of 4-1. to one. The Central Coast Harmony Chorus singing an interesting rendition of Take Me Out to the Ball Game. It was really good. I've never heard a preface and an epilogue to Take Me Out to the Ball Game, but a unique viewing here at Sinsheimer Stadium, and the fans are still here, and they're excited. The Blues lead it by a score of 4-1, to one, and A.J. Moreno just got out of a jam by striking out the side in the top of the seventh inning, and now the bats are back up for the Blues, starting with Jacob Ruley, the two-hole hitter and second baseman. He is one for two with a double and a sacrifice bunt today. Oh well. And he takes a fastball on the outside corner. It did not go around, and it's one ball and no strikes. That one's close. That's been a fastball that's been getting called today. Kind of gets away with a call there. And 
It's still the lefty. Yeah, that's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Dayton Hicks is still on the mound, and he was able to work a 1-2-3 inning last inning. Big help by his defense. Russell, the third baseman, made a miraculous diving play at third to rob Nin Burns of extra bases to end the inning. Two yes. balls, no strikes. Especially impressive with Nin Burns' speed, too. And yeah, that's outside, 3-0. I feel like sometimes when you have a guy with such a herky-jerky motion like this, you're almost more scared when he can't throw a strike because eventually one of them's coming at you. You are, but so far right now, that fastball action's been tailing away from right-handed hitters like Ruley. I'm feeling like I'm in the clear as he's drawing a walk. So a no-out base runner for the Blues. We're looking to add some insurance runs. That's the thing that I think if you're looking at what the Blues have done offensively so far this year. That's one area where they can improve is adding on once they do have a lead to just further distance themselves from the opponent. As TJ Adams comes to the dish now, a sacrifice fly, a walk, he's 0 oh, for 1. I don't know what that pitch was, but it was filthy and it was a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Oh, yeah, weird movement. Herky-jerky delivery, herky-jerky movement on that baseball. Could have been an inside changeup that Bent back towards the plate on the inside corner. It wasn't fast enough to be a fastball. A one. And Adams waits back and watches the slider in there for a strike. It's no balls and two strikes. It's just frisbeeing in there. Lots of movement on that slider. 0-2 with Ruley at first. The lefty kicks and deals. And that's outside. The catcher, Jeske, faked as if he was going to back pick to first. Decided against it as the count moves to 1-2. and two. Dayton Hicks from Diablo Valley College, working from the third base side of the rubber. Glove held at the belt. So he waits to dip and throw. He delivers, and Adams waits back, fights it off towards right field. This is going to be a tough play for Venavides, and it drops for a base hit. T.J. Adams in with his first hit of the day, and the Blues have two base runners on with nobody out. Yeah, T.J. Adams the, making himself the king of bloops right there. This one's tailing towards the line. That's a tough play to make in right field when that ball is slicing and Benavides can't get to it. There's now runners at first and second. And Trevor Schmidt has been real hot at the plate. He's one for two today, has a single, and he drew a walk in the fifth. Got an RBI for it as the Blues had the bases loaded. And now he gets his first opportunity to hit off a lefty today. And some of these guys, the submarine pitchers that throw, of course, under underhand almost, they actually often have reverse splits where the same handedness hitters actually hit better against them than what's normal, which is where a lefty will hit a righty better, a righty will hit a lefty better. You look at it, some of the guys that pitch in the major leagues is the pitches come so far in on the, the opposite hitters that it's actually the guys that are the same handedness that have a better shot because they can stay on it a little bit longer. 2-0, well. and that's outside. Three balls and no strikes. Yeah, especially the case here for Schmidt. I was talking to him during batting practice. Wanting to go backside fly, which I'll translate that into English for you guys. Home run into left field. He was going that approach as a lefty. Oftentimes they like to pull, but he wanted to go opposite field. 3-0, and, oh, and he'll draw a walk. His team leading eighth base on balls of the season. You wonder if it ever gets a little bit boring to draw a walk, but the Blues have the bases loaded with nobody out here in the seventh, and the Mudcats have a little bit of control issues over these past couple innings. Yeah, and Schmidt's happy to draw another walk, I'm sure. He's seen it real well. It's been rewarding him so far this season. I think it's just a sign that things are continuing to go well, and he's leaving pitches he doesn't like and getting ones he does like, and is capitalizing on it. Jeske had to talk with his left-hander. The Blues have the bases loaded with nobody out. This is the time where if they're going to separate in this game and make it an easier path down the stretch, this is the inning to do it. Bases loaded, nobody out. Ruley's at second. Adams, Ruley's at third. Adams is at second. And Trevor Schmidt is the runner at first base after his four-pitch walk. Cody Darcy, who does not have a hit today, but he's reached on a walk and an error, is coming to the dish. The fifth-year senior who just finished up at Arkansas State playing for his second season for the Blues. Has a big opportunity here. His, the time he reached on an error, he hit a line drive with the bases loaded out to left, and the left fielder, McGee, could not reel it in. It just simply clanked off his glove. 
And no RBI credit for Darcy on that play as he bends back out of the way of this one. It's one ball and no strikes. Yeah, big moment here for the kid. Hit that error and left. Hit it well. Seeing he can duplicate that swing. One of the straighter balls that we've seen from the Blues. More in the center field and more the left center gap as opposed to the lines. 1-0, and that's in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. That's six in a row out of the hand of the lefty Dayton Hicks. And you got to figure the take sign is on for Darcy here. Two balls, no strikes. Bases loaded. A walk, a wild pitch, or a pass ball will bring in a run for the Blues. Hicks, front foot offset, kicks and deals, and hits the lower part of the zone with a fastball. It's 2-1. and one. And Darcy ready to go, seeing that strike. And the first Blues hitters to see one this inning. Now he might let it fly. 2-1, and he chops it on the ground towards short. Backhanded play by Toby, the shortstop to second for one to first, a double play with the Blues score a run. Two outs, one run, and the Blues are up now 5-1. to one. Yeah, once again, not sexy. You know, RBI, ground out, double play. Darcy does a good job hustling down the line. He squares this one up pretty well, but unlucky for him. It goes right into the shortstop and Tyler Toby, and they flip it for two. But Blues do get one across the board, so they capitalize in that situation. All in all, for Dayton Hicks, who had thrown six straight balls, that's probably a net victory for him to get two outs, only allow the one run. And that's in the dirt to Corbin Ibarra. The Blues have now had bases loaded, nobody out two times. The first time, not exactly their fault, but they did not score. And now they only scored one run on the two outs, and it's on the bat of Ibarra now to try and bring in another. And that's off his foot. It hit Ibarra, and that's worse for the Blues. If that was a pass ball, it would have scored a run. And now Ibarra goes to first, and it's first and third with two outs. So... For Ibarra, he reaches on the hit by pitch, but I think the Blues would have rather that skipped by his shoes instead of hitting him. And yeah, they would have. I'm curious as to why he didn't move his foot out of the way. There's the 0-0 to Tollerman. Looked like the change up for a strike. Now, Tollerman has been robbed a couple of times today. He lined out to left. It ended up being a double play because the umpires ruled that Trevor Schmidt did not tag up correctly from third base. And he would have had an RBI, but was called out on a ground ball double play. As this one squirts away, here comes another run in for the Blues. It's 6-1. Here we go. The Blues get it back. They get that run anyway on a pass ball. Add on another one, 6-1. Adam scores. And Ibarra moves up to second. As I was saying, though, Tollerman hit a ground ball. This was back in the fifth inning. Would have scored a run, but the umpires called him out at first on a play he clearly beat to the bag. And now it's another RBI chance. He's gotten some runs taken off the board in his way a couple times today. 1-1. One, one, that's in there for a strike. So an unlucky day for Zach Tollerman at the yard, but he can straighten things out with a base hit here. And if I'm left side of the infield, I'm reading the scouting report. A lot of choppers that way. Come get a chopper, two outs. He skies one up off the facing of the press box. And it's still one ball and two strikes. In Tollerman's side, he, he does have a double today too. So it was a chopper down the third base line, bounced over the third baseman Russell. He did end up with a base hit. So it's not a completely unlucky day. One, two. And that's inside, two balls and two strikes. Ibarra's at second. The Blues have scored two more runs here in the bottom of the seventh inning to extend their lead to 6-1. to one. Three walks and the double play scored a run. Two balls, two strikes on Zach Tollerman. Ibarra takes off for third. Tollerman takes it into the dirt, and Ibarra takes it with ease. Okay, Ibarra. Swipe in third. Once again, he's kind of just showing off there. I mean, clearly he's got the speed. I mean, if he's got a single from Tollerman, he can score. Tollerman can find a gap. 3-2. And that's inside. Tollerman draws a walk. It's his eighth of the season. And the Blues have another base runner with two outs. First and third with two away. That's the fourth walk in the inning. 
And in total on the game, let me count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times the Blues have walked. There's been a hit by pitch. There have been two errors by the Mudcats. A lot of free 90s going on here at Sinsheimer Stadium in favor of the Blues as Augusto Schroeder steps up to the dish now trying to bring in another run. He takes one low in the dirt, and it's one ball and no strikes. Ibarra at third, Tollerman at first. And with all those numbers, you wonder how the Blues haven't scored more than six. 1-0, Tollerman takes off for second. It's inside, no throw. And Tollerman takes the bag. Two runners in scoring position and a 2-0 count. Look at Tollerman showing off the wheels. He's slow blues runner has been testing Jeske, and so far they have been passing the test. And Tollerman, I'm not sure if he was expecting it, but ends up with a stolen base on the scorecard today. Two balls, no strikes. You'll remember that one forever. Here's the pitch to Schroeder, and he taps it off the plate. Foul, two balls and one strike. Yeah, it's good the Blues are catching a break here, putting up six runs. They're up 6-1, but still continues to be a theme. I mean, they're not necessarily punishing the ball. It's getting a lot of walks, getting past balls. It's a lot of that action. 2-1 the count on Schroeder, who's 0-3. And he takes inside. Three balls and one strike. A walk would load the bases for Johnny DeBrum, who has reached base twice today. He stands in the on-deck circle. He wants a chance, I'm sure, with bases loaded and two outs. Here comes the 3-1. And Schroeder swings and misses at the changeup, and the count moves full. He'll take a walk with himself. I, th I think he thought he struck out, actually. Yeah. I was just going to say, some guys take some big old walks around the, around the box. But yeah, it looked like I thought he was out there. Well, in his eyes, it's a second life. Uh, he'll want to come through with it with two runners on, both in scoring position and two outs. Payoff pitch on the way. And Schroeder strikes out swinging. So a real strikeout, but the Blues add two more here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Thanks, Nate, again for your color commentary. We head to the top of the eighth inning with the Blues still on top by a score of 6-1. to one. The Solano Mudcats have not won an opening series in their last three summers, and the Blues are six outs away from winning this game two of the three-game set with them and the Mudcats to extend this one to a rubber match tomorrow at 7. As a reminder, stay tuned after this ball game as you'll have the San Luis Obispo Blues' first fireworks display of the summer coming up anywhere between 10 to 20 minutes 
after the last out of the game. It looks like it's dark enough here at Sinsheimer that by the end, if the lights are off, it'll be dark enough for the fireworks. Caden Tynes is into the game, and he'll face Noah Garcia, Jake Tandy, and Tyler Toby with a five-run lead. He kicks and deals, and Garcia takes low. One ball and no strikes. Tynes making his second appearance of the summer. He finished the game on Saturday versus the Coastal Dodgers, and here he is a week later with a zero ERA, two perfect innings, four strikeouts. And there's a liner back to the screen, one and one. The Blues have scored in three separate innings, one run in the third inning, three runs in the fifth inning, and two more last inning in the bottom of the seventh. As they're trying to extend this series, grab a win here in game two, 1-1. One, one. And there's a chopper right back to Tynes. He picks it up out of nowhere and tosses it to first underhand. He's like, where did I find this? And flipped it out of his glove to Tollerman for the first out. So Garcia's retired, and now Tandy coming to the dish. One out in the top of the eighth inning. Tandy's 0 for 3. He struck out once. That was back against Alanis to start the fourth inning. The 0-0 is in there for a strike. Tynes did not play this past season at Cuesta College, but did pitch for the Blues last summer. He threw 2.2 scoreless innings. He ended up as the only pitcher on the summer with a 0 ERA, as the count is now one ball and one strike. He was a two-sport standout at Arroyo Grande High School, two years as a varsity baseball player, and an all-area offensive player of the year as the AG running back. As that misses high, two balls and one strike. Listen to this, 1,289 total yards with 21 total touchdowns for Tynes in his senior season. And, oh, yeah, he played defense too. 92 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four sacks, and an interception as linebacker. 2-1. And that is flown out to center field, or second base. Caught that one in the lights, and it falls into the glove of Ruley at second for the second out of the frame. Weird motion off the bat of Jake Sandy. That one looked destined to fall in front of Nin Burns in center, but did not fly even close to that far, and Ruley's able to make the play. So here's Tyler Toby. He's 0 for 8. Oh, it's been a weekend to forget for him so far. He's got four strikeouts. And that's a little bit outside for ball one. I'll have to talk with Caden about how he was able to balance being so good at two different sports. All area offensive player of the year as a running back. As that's upstairs, two balls and no strikes. I think my favorite note on Tynes on the football field, did not wear gloves of any kind. So he ran the ball, caught the ball, and played defense without wearing any kind of gloves. It's not, not something you see in this generation. There's a big swing and miss by Tyler Toby. It's 2-1. and one. But it didn't hinder his performance. The 21 total touchdowns is the number that stands out most to me. And balancing it with being a baseball player at the next level. 2-1. That's outside. Three balls and one strike. In total now, if you don't count this batter and what's about to happen... For the Blues across these past two summers as a temporary arm, he has thrown five and a third perfect innings as that's flown out of play. Three balls and two strikes. Needs one more out here to get through the top of the eighth inning and bring the Blues' bats back up to try and add insurance late in this game. It's 6-1, to one, the Blues' lead. Tines from the stretch. Looks in at Debrum, the catcher, for his sign. He's got it. He kicks and deals, and there's a liner into right field, base hit. Ibarra, the right fielder, thought about throwing into first, but Tollerman wasn't looking, and a two-out base hit for the Mudcats. And for Toby, that's at least some sort of silver lining across these first two games. Gets his first hit, as we mentioned previously, was 0 for 8, so something to take into tomorrow if he's back in the lineup. Here's Caleb Jeske, the catcher. He's one for three with a single and a strikeout. And he gets his first chance to face Tynes. Tynes is the third pitcher for the Blues. It was Alanis, the right-handed starter. Then Moreno came in 
and works two and a third. And now Tynes gets the eighth. With two outs and a runner aboard, here's his 0-0 pitch. A big swing and a miss above the zone. It's 0-1. Shkesti, the catcher from Marin Community College. Six foot, 190 pound right hander from Angwin, California. Tynes looks in at the junior and slings it in 0 1. And that's upstairs. One ball and one strike. For the Blues, the pitching has matched. Today, more of what they've done as a whole this season. Coming into yesterday's game, the Blues had only allowed 13 runs across the first four games and allowed nine total runs yesterday. It was just a, a wacky inning that really mixed up what was a day of pretty good Blues pitching for the most part. And that's been the standout for the Blues this season. It's been the arms. Robbie Lardner got singled out a little bit in his last inning yesterday. That was the inning where... The Mudcats scored all the runs. 2-1. And there's a fly ball to right field. Ibarra has lost it in the lights, and it's over his head. It one-hops the wall, and Ibarra wasn't close to it. He picks it up on the warning track, throws in. The second baseman, Ruley, is going to try for third. His throw is into Schroeder too late. A triple off the wall for Caleb Jeske, and it's 6-2. Ibarra had no shot once he lost that ball. And a sign of life for the Mudcats who put on a run here. It's their first run since the third batter of the game when Noah Garcia, the first baseman, hit a bloop double to center field. So Blues pitching really bared down. And they've kept the Mudcats off the scoreboard till now. Another shot for the Mudcats to add on. It's Michael Benavides who's one for three. And he hits a high drive to left field. And... Now it's Adams who can't find it. Now he's chasing it back, and it two hops the wall. Benavides is trying for third. Here's the running throw from Darcy. He decides not to make it. Another triple for the Mudcats, and fly balls are a problem right now at Sinsheimer Stadium. 6-3 now the lead for the Blues, and this game's getting oh so closer with two straight triples into the lights. I'm not sure I've seen anything like this before. And now a meeting going on at the mound. Tynes has gotten two deep fly balls that I think earlier in the night would have been some routine plays for these Blues corner outfielders, but it's so dark in the outfield right now. As you can see, the spots of darkness right in front of Ibarra and Adams, and they just can't see it. So Benavides triples. Jeske scores. It's now a three-run game, and there's still a runner at third for the Blues. I don't even know what the discussion is for Tynes here. Is it, hey, try and get us a ground ball, not another fly ball. That's easier said than done. As Nate Hamburger is going to come up now, he is 0 for 2 today with a walk. Reach second base in the seventh before A.J. Moreno struck out the side. So Tynes no longer a perfect ERA. As he's allowed two runs in the frame, no fault of his own on the fly balls. But he's got a bear down now, and he misses high with a slider. One ball and no strikes. Hamburger has one hit on the weekend and seven plate appearances. It was a triple yesterday. one -oh from Times. And Hamburger takes it inside. It's off the glove of DeBrum. We might have a play at the plate. DeBrum underhand flips, and it's not in time. 6-4 now the scores. This game got close in a hurry. It's now just a two-run Blues lead as the count moves to two balls and no strikes. The tying runs in the on-deck circle. And that's a wild pitch from Caden Tynes. The Mudcats have come across to score three runs here in the inning. The Blues still aren't out of it. Two outs, a 2 nothing count. On the right-hander, Nate Hamburger with Alec Nava, the nine-hole hitter, on deck. Tynes kicks and deals and misses outside with a fastball. A walk would bring the tying run to the plate. And if you're the Blues, who led by five runs coming into this inning, that is the last thing you want. Can't let the Mudcats on for free. Tynes delivers and misses high. A four-pitch walk puts a runner on. The tying run coming to the plate. 
And the Blues have another arm warming in the bullpen. We'll see if they make the call down there for the righty. It looks like the call from the dugout right now is to speed things up. But as of now, it seems as if Tynes is staying in this game. But another fly ball that drops. This could be trouble for the Blues. With a tying run at the dish, and Alec Nava, who led off yesterday's game, went one for five. And so far today, he's 0 for 2 with a walk. All of this happening with two outs. Deja vu from last night. And there's a foul off the mask of DeBrum. Tyne's got the first two outs of the frame. Got a ground ball right back to himself and then a pop-up to the second baseman, Ruley. Since then, the inning's gone single, triple, triple walk. All three of those hits have scored. And the walk is still at first base in the form of Nate Hamburger. Owen won the count on Nava. Tyne's looking for the third out that's still dodging him. A one. And he hits him in the back. The tying runs aboard as Nava reaches, and the top of the order is coming up. This is a dangerous situation for the Blues. And with two runners on now, we are getting a meeting at the mound for the Blues. And this might be the end of the inning for Tynes. Things got away from him with two outs, and it's a situation the Blues cannot allow to continue. We'll see if Tynes gets to keep the ball. He does not. He gets a pat on the back as he walks out. The two triples didn't help that the outfielders could not pick up. The lights playing tricks on the Blues. We're still here in the top of the eighth inning. Two runners on, two outs, a new arm coming in. We'll be right back here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. Don't go anywhere. New arm in for the Blues in this dangerous spot is Matthew Gonzalez, the right-hander who leads the Blues in appearances. He came in yesterday for his third appearance of the year, only needed to get one out. He gave up two hits, though, three runs, none earned on the error because of JT Rickens' misplay at third base. But this is a big spot. Leadoff hitter coming up for the Solano Mudcats. Two runners on, including the tying run at first base in the form of Alec Nava. The Blues entered this inning up by five. They've given up. Three runs in the frame, and now Gonzalez is tasked with getting this third out, looking in at Max McGee. He kicks and deals, and McGee takes a fastball for a strike. It's 0-1-1. Giving up the lead in this inning would really sting, especially after the way that the game went yesterday in, in a very similar spot where the Mudcats scored seven with two outs. And that's outside. Nice stop by DeBrum. On the slider, one and one. But in that sixth inning yesterday, the Blues got the first two outs, very reminiscent of this frame. But then five hits, all with two outs, a couple errors by the Blues, and seven runs were put up on the board by the Mudcats. 
Gonzalez is part of it. Wants revenge today. 1-1. One, one. And McGee tries to check his swing but goes around on the slider. It's 1-2. and two. The Blues fans are raising the decibel level here at Sinsheimer Stadium. They want the final out of this inning as the Blues trying to get back in the dugout, preserve the lead. One ball and two strikes the count with two outs. Gonzalez kicks and deals. Runners take off, and that's outside, and both runners advance. Two balls and two strikes. So now the tying run in scoring position at second base in the form of Alec Nava. Both he and the runner at third hamburger have good speed. So a hit here for the Mudcats might tie this game. Gonzalez kicks and deals. And he struck him out on the slider. Beautiful pitch right over the heart of the plate. And Gonzalez gets the K. The lead is preserved for now. The Blues head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Still up by two. And they'll try and get the bats back going here on the Slow Blues Streaming Network. We've got the rare pitching change. The DH, Jake Tandy, is coming onto the mound for the Solano Mudcats here in the top of the ninth inning, or the bottom of the eighth inning. So Tandy, who is 0 for 4 at the plate today, has a chance to try and work a scoreless frame here in the bottom of the eighth. The Mudcats scored three runs on a couple of tough plays for the Blues on, on balls they just simply could not find in the lights that eventually made their way to the wall. But... This game's a heck of a lot closer now. The Blues just lead by two. It's Johnny DeBrums at the dish, and he checks his swing on a fastball that's a little bit too high. One ball and no strikes. Well, the Blues trying to add some runs on the scoreboard and extend their lead, find some insurance runs here in the eighth. 1-0, and DeBrum lines it foul off the glove of the catcher, Jeske. It's one ball and one strike. DeBrum today has reached base twice. He's doubled and walked. In total, he is one for two. He has, though, scored two of the Blues' six runs. The bottom of the order has been getting things done for the Blues here today. 1-1, one, one, and that's way high. Back to the screen, two balls and one strike. That fastball, 88 miles an hour. It looked like it just kept Ron running up at the top of the zone past Jeske, the catcher. It's 2-1 and one on DeBrum, who's trying to reach to start the frame. He swings and lines it right back into the glove of the catcher, Desky. It's two and two. As a reminder, stick around after the game. Fireworks here at Sinsheimer Stadium. The Blues are just trying to get through with a win here first. 
2-2. And Abram chases and strikes out swinging. One out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. So Abram strikes out for the first time today. The Blues in total have now struck out seven times. Nin Burns, the leadoff hitter, coming up now. He's got one of the Ks, but he's also reached on two walks. He's scored a run. He's 0 for 2. Here's the 0-0, and Tandy misses high with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. The Blues looking to avoid falling to 500. They haven't been at or below 500 all year as they got off to a hot start with two straight wins. Burns flies that one out of play down the first baseline, one and one. Well, the Blues, three and two their record. They won the first two, then... Lost one, won one again, and then lost yesterday night to move their record to three and two. Burns, the everyday leadoff hitter, swings one one and lifts another one out of play, one and two. The Mudcats have been pesky today. And he's just stinging like a porcupine the whole game, biting back at this lead for the Blues. Now they've set themselves up in a good position. If they can work a scoreless inning here. They'll have 2-3-4 in their order, starting with their best hitter in Austin Russell due up in the top of the ninth inning. 1-2. And Burns takes it low. Two balls and two strikes. Jacob Ruley on deck, the second baseman for the Blues. He's reached base twice today, and he's scored a run. Also a big key sacrifice bunt for the on-deck hitter for the Blues. Two balls, two strikes on Burns. He bends back out of the way of a breaking ball, and it's inside, three and two. Walking Burns is like giving up a double with the kind of speed he has. Five of six on stolen bases this season. Payoff pitch, and Burns takes it right down the middle. Strike three called. Burns wasn't looking for a fastball, and that's two straight strikeouts for Tandy, and there's two away. Just second strikeout for Burns today, and now the Blues have struck out a total of eight times. On the pitching side, there's been a lot of strikeouts for the Blues. They've struck out ten Solano Mudcats today. And there have been a couple innings, in fact two, in which the Blues have struck out the side. So here's Ruley looking to keep the inning alive. Had some insurance here for slow. Oh well. And that's outside, one ball and no strikes. Ruley has two doubles here in his first two games for the Blues this summer. This is his first series for slow in 2023. 1-0. He looks at it high. Hitters count for the Blues two-hole hitter. And he bends back out of the way. Three balls and no strikes. A walk would be big anytime you can get a two-out walk. Put a base runner on with two outs, force the pitcher to work from the stretch. And with T.J. Adams on deck, who's got a sack fly and he's reached twice. If you can get a base runner on for the harder your order on Adams and Schmidt, you feel pretty comfortable about the way this offense could produce. And three balls and one strike to count now on Ruley. Tandy from the stretch, kicks and deals. And Ruley watches it up high. It is a walk. There is a runner aboard for the Blues, and Adams is coming up. Adams is 0 for 1. He struck out in the first inning. Since then, three non-plate appearances, or non-at-bats. A sack fly in the third, a walk and a run in the fifth, and a walk and a run in the seventh. He's been right in the middle of the Blues' two big scoring innings. Oh, well, and he lifts a fly ball down the first baseline and out of play. This is a souvenir for someone, and it bounces off the kids, bounce off each other to try and pick up the ball on someone one. It's been a long game, nearly at the three-hour mark here today. 0-1 to Adams, and that's outside and low, one ball and one strike. Ruley's at first. He drew a two-out walk. 
Good speed with the second baseman from CSU Bakersfield. And Adams from Arizona looking to find a gap or a line and bring in a run. 1-1. Adams takes it outside again. Two balls and one strike. Adams has three runs batted in in his short time with the Blues. Two one, and that's a rocket shot back to the netting. Two balls and two strikes. Tandy struck out the first two hitters this inning. Got to Brum swinging and Burns looking on a three two pitch. The walk to Ruley has given Adams a chance to hit with a runner aboard, and the count even up at two and two. We'll see if Ruley takes off for second to put some pressure on the defense. Tandy strides and shoots. And he hits the middle of the strike zone with a fastball called strike three. Dandy strikes out the side, and two runs will have to be enough. We head to the top of the ninth inning, and the Blues lead it by a score of 6-4. to four. could you want? The Blues have a two-run lead. Matthew Gonzalez is in there to try and save this game up on fireworks night here at Sinsheimer Stadium, and it's the heart of the order coming up for the Solano Mudcats. Austin Russell, Noah Garcia, and Jake Tandy. And starting with Russell, who had two hits to start the game. Since then, he's been retired twice. And Gonzalez looking for his third save of the summer. He misses outside with a breaking ball. One ball and no strikes. Gonzalez, who came in to get just one out yesterday and had to labor through it on the error by Ricken at third, 1-0. That's tapped foul down the third baseline. He went to the coaching staff today, said he wanted to get right back in today's game. Yesterday's matchup left a bad taste in his mouth. He gave up three unearned runs in that seven-run inning for the Mudcats, but now has a chance to get a four-out save. 1-1. One, one. Big swing and a miss. Healthy breaking ball off the outside corner. And it's a two-strike count. Gonzalez still a sterling ERA with the unearned runs. And Russell flies it to right. Ibarra dives, and he makes the catch. He took a hit away from Russell to start the inning. And what a beautiful play by the right. As Ibarra made a miss. And Garcia is going to collect himself. He took a mighty hack at that pitch in the dirt. And it's 0-2. Well, Gonzalez has the good stuff working. It seems to be clearly searching revenge for yesterday's game. 0-2. And that's outside with the changeup. One ball and two strikes. Garcia at the dish, the first baseman from Laverne, has a double, a single today, and he's two for four. One and two the count. Gonzalez kicks and fires, and he struck him out swinging. Garcia goes down on the breaking ball, and there's two outs. The Blues are one away from a victory here in game two. That's the 11th strikeout for Blues pitching. It's the second for Gonzalez. He got the strikeout of McGee to end the eighth inning with runners at second and third with the tying run in scoring position. Now he's just one out away from getting the Blues out of this one. And that's a slider. Just misses outside 1-0. The batter is Jake Tandy, who came in to pitch the ninth inning. Staying in there is the DH. He's 0-4 with a strikeout. 
Gonzalez working from the windup. He's ready, and he kicks and deals. And Tandy watches that breaking ball for a strike, one and one. The fans are clapping it up. They're ready to see this final out and get the fireworks show started after what they hope is a win for the Blues. 1-1. One, one. And Tandy watches the breaking ball in there again. One ball and two strikes. The Blues one strike away from evening up this series. That one game apiece. The cheers start to rain out. One and two. Gonzalez into his windup. He deals. And there's a high drive towards center field. Burns broke in. Now he's camped under it. Calls everyone off. And he makes the catch. The Blues even up the series at one apiece. And battle around a chaotic game. It's a two-run win for the Blues. Final score of 6-4. to four. Gonzalez gets another save. The Blues win it by two. And it's a happy day for everyone here at Sinsheimer Stadium. Stay tuned. There's a fireworks show coming up. Just about 10 or 15 minutes. we got to get the lights off, get the fireworks set up. But stay tuned. We'll have it right here for you on the Slow Blues Streaming Network.
Alright folks, so we're looking at about six minutes. About six minutes. So kids, you want to find the grown-up you came with. Grown-ups, find the kid you came with. You kind of have to. out folks about four minutes out start gathering your little ones Three minutes and counting. Three minutes. Two minutes, folks. Two minutes. Find your seats. It gets really, really dark. Please find your seats, kids. Please find your grown-ups. Just about a minute out from putting all the lights up.
All right, folks, we're gonna count it down. 10 seconds, we're gonna be total darkness. Ready, count with me. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 